Last night at Dodger Stadium, Albert Pujols had a multi-home run night for the 40th time in his illustrious career. And Albert just wore him out. Long drive to left, home run Pujols. Long drive to center. Back to the wall. It's gone. For the first time, a teammate joined Albert with a multi-home run game of his own. It's a long one to right field off the bat of Berkman. Back to the track, to the wall. Big fly, Berkman. What a road trip he's having. Another drive to right. It's deep. It's back. It's gone. Another homer for Lance Berkman. What a road trip. Are you kidding me? Welcome to Cardinal Baseball on Fox Sports Midwest from Dodger Stadium. Game three of a four-game series, the Red Hot Cardinals and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Welcome to the telecast. Rick Horton alongside Al Roboski. And Al, this offense has been good, but just how good have they been? It's been historic. They're just going throughout the lineup. They're doing the job and look for it to continue as long as the big three contribute. Everybody else kind of relaxes and they got their hitting shoes on. It's certainly been fun. We'll take a look at the pitching matchup for tonight's ball game when we come back. Welcome back to Cardinal Baseball from Southern California. The Dodgers hosting the Cardinals, game three of a four-game series. Dodgers have lost four straight. They turn to Clayton Kershaw. They have not won since his last start against the Giants. He's only 23 years of age. He is the ace of their staff. He got away with just natural talent the first few years, but now he's really putting together and pitching extremely well. Cardinal bats are hot. Matt Holliday has hit Kershaw and the Dodgers well. We'll take a look at the Cardinal starter when we come back. Fans filing into Dodger Stadium Saturday night baseball. The Cardinals and the Dodgers. Perfect night for a game. Cardinals will go in our Toyota Keys to the game with their fifth starter, Kyle McClellan. Kyle McClellan is so far so good. He's pitched very well. He'll be making his first career start against the Dodgers, yet he has pitched very well in this ballpark, not allowing a run as a reliever. Dodgers struggling to find some offense. Matt Kemp is supplying most of it in the cleanup spot. Cardinals and the Dodgers, and it's coming up next. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some Bud. By Chevy. See your Mid-America Chevy dealers. By Southwest Airlines, new rapid rewards. Unlimited reward seats and no blackout days. By Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers, number one in quality tires and expert auto service. And by Steak and Shake, life needs flavor. Beautiful view from Dodger Stadium. And somebody appears to be lost. Still looking for their seat at beautiful Dodger Stadium. Cardinals game nine of a 10 game road trip. Tony La Russa has to like what he's seen from his clubs, especially offensively. And here's a look at the Cardinals batting order. Balanced throughout, Terry Rasmus and Pujols are one, two, three. Then Holiday Freeze Craig will be in right field, replacing the red hot Lance Berkman. Gerald Laird will be behind the plate. Tyler Green and Kyle McClellan looking for his second victory of the season. And the opposition goes with one of the best young pitchers in the game, Al Clayton Kershaw. Only 23 years of age, made his major league debut in 08 against the Cardinals. And he really, the first couple of years, just had exceptional physical talent. Now he's starting to put that great immense talent together with the idea of understanding what he's doing as a pitcher. His last time out, he didn't have his best stuff, but still has that ability to win. He really is one of the best young pitchers in the game. Low ERA, 1.37, piles up the strikeouts. And his first pitch to Ryan Terrio is taken low. Kershaw, one of the top pitchers in the last 30 years at getting to 500 strikeouts for his career. Only four guys have done it quicker. In terms of age, he's just, as you mentioned, now 23 years of age. 
and very, very talented. Let's see. You got uh, Dwight Gooden, Valenzuela, and who else would be on that list? I believe Felix Hernandez is yes, on that list. Yes, that's it. I think. Look at that. Broken off. bat to the right side. And a good start for Kershaw. Dodger defense off to a good start. Gwynn, Kemp, and Ethier in the outfield from left to right. Kemp's the best of that lot. Aaron Miles, former Cardinal, gets to start at second base. And Rod Barajas, the veteran, will catch Clayton Kershaw. That's our Dobbs Tyron Auto Center's Dodgers defense. Don Mattingly will turn 50 years of age next Wednesday. And he's going to start to get some gray hair if his Dodgers don't stay, don't start playing better, Al. Lost four in a row. Loop to left. This might drop. And sliding play. Nice play by Tony Gwynn Jr. on the run to take a hit away from Colby Rasmus. The very last second, Gwynn closed on that ball. The sliding catch. He's the only one that had any chance at it. And just that where it fell in right there that just made it a very difficult play not hit hard had to break in on that ball and here's Mr. Breakout he is red hot Albert Pujols the average up to 241 four homers 10 RBIs and a lot of those numbers have come in the last few days five game hitting streak remember yesterday we saw him eating something on the bench to so him eating Deidre getting her pregame meal. I was correct. Oh, yeah. It was an oh, yeah. It was an oh, yeah bar. Matter of fact, it's the newest version. It was the cookie caramel bar. That is he some eats, research, he Al. He's two a game, and he pounds the strawberry cream poaching drink from oh, yeah. Wow. That is Al Roboski at his finest. Following up on the food intake of the Cardinal slugger, Albert, <laughs> Albert Pujol. Well, they have really, oh yeah, his is a lot of billboards, and that's where I, I put two and two together before I found out what the bar was. But the two one to Albert is taken high, and I'm going to get you some next week because they are delicious. You I would like protein some. shakes and bars. Sign me up. Mark McGuire knows all about them. Dangerous pitch for Kershaw here. Three one to Albert. Good swing, and he fouls it back. Kershaw, 86 major league starts. Only once has he struck out just one batter in a game. And that was against the Cardinals. And that was Colby Rasmus. He is a strikeout machine. Three and two now to Pujol. And the pitch. Off-speed pitch. Strikeout number one. 87 games in a row with a strikeout for Kershaw. Cardinals go down one, two, three in the top of the first. Bottom of the first, no score from Dodger Stadium. Get yourself a Dodger dog and enjoy a great matchup here tonight. Could be a good pitching duel. Dodgers and the Cardinals. Cardinals with red hot bats cooled down there in the top of the first inning by Clayton Kershaw. And now Kyle McClellan will get his first shot at the Dodgers and Tony Gwynn Jr. Kyle McClellan in his first two starts, both of them have been quality starts as he's demonstrating that he can pick six innings. And so far, so good. The only question I have is because you knew his physical ability and the fact that he's got four outstanding pitches. You knew he was a good candidate for the rotation, but could he pitch enough innings to where you know he could go deep enough in a game that it doesn't put an extra burden on the bullpen? And that that has been a definite yes. Base hit to right field. Dodgers have a runner aboard for Casey Blake. Dodger lineup has been hot at the top, not so much at the bottom of the order. First four hitters. Gwynn, Blake, Ethier, and Kemp with good averages. Then Uribe, Loney, Barajas, Miles, and Kershaw. Have not been swinging the bat very well. Here's the Dobbs Cardinals defense. Holiday Rasmus, Craig in the outfield. Tyler Green getting the start at second base. Gerald Laird behind the plate for Kyle McClellan. And you win the first two games of this four-game series, and you know, with a day game tomorrow. Tony has the luxury of putting in some of his extra parts. 
not wait until Sunday because it's just a fact of life. When Carpenter pitches, you get your best lineup with him. And you'd think that Molina would catch one of the two games, not both. And the last time that Yachty got the day off in Arizona, you know, Gerald Laird had a three hit night and has handled the pitching staff very well. Gerald Laird's catching ERA is is under 220. Exactly. Saw that too. That's a big stat for catchers. Trying it's sometimes very misleading. Yeah. Depends on who you're catching. Yes. And usually a lot of times the backup will get like your number five or your number four, but you rarely get the ace of the staff. And you know that's one of the things they want to give Yachty a little more rest. Did have a big night last night, tied his career high with four for four and on base five times with a fifth time up being a walk. There goes Gwen, and that ball hits Casey Blake. Looked like it might have got him on the wrist. It was set up inside, and Kyle McClellan got it inside. Coming to the plate, right fielder, number 16, Andre. Pretty good jump by Gwen. And that's the other thing the teams will do. They'll run more on the Cardinals when Yachty's out. That pitch maybe got the right arm. It did. Ouch. Right hand and around that wrist or bottom part. Now, the, one of the other things, and it's just sort of a natural, the Kyle McClellan moving from 200 and two relief appearances now to making his third major league start. First inning. You know, naturally, you would think there would be a little troublesome as you warm up, but you're trying to keep your pace. You're trying to make sure that you can go three times through the order. So the first inning, you know, you, it probably is not unrealistic that he will maybe have a little more trouble in that first inning. But he always has the ability and the stuff to get out of this. Facing Andre Ethier, 12-game hit streak for the Dodger right fielder. Outstanding talent. His first year in the big leagues, I knew Ethier was a hitter. Kyle's getting a lot of balls up. He's pitching behind the count. I mean, it's only the third hitter, but a 400 hitter during his 12 game hitting streak for Kyle. Ethier. Dodgers have had trouble scoring runs of late. And you might expect the Dodgers to be aggressive on the base paths with Laird behind the plate, and you think they might run on the Cardinal outfielder. Well, they're definitely going to run on the Cardinal outfielders. Gerald Laird has demonstrated that he has a fine throwing arm. Ball to center. Rasmus goes to his right, catches it in the gap, gets the ball into second base. That's the right throw there. Definitely. As Tony Gwynn Jr. advances to third. Gwynn does a good job, tags up. Casey Blake at first base wanted to tag up and advance into scoring position, but he saw the throw point going in. As you said, the proper throw to second base to keep the double play in order. And you think there's some communication going on there with Terrio and the left fielder Holiday making sure Colby knows 2-2-2 two, two, two on that throw. And a lot of times, you know, with your peripheral vision, you can see where the cutoff man is set up and just hit the cutoff man. But in this case, he had the arm strength to throw it into second base and keep Blake at first. McClellan one pitch from getting out of this inning. Matt Kemp at 4.49. He's leading. National League in hitting. Five of the top ten hitters in the National League are in this game tonight. Camp is first. And I think there's seven of the top nine. Colby Rasmus fourth. David Freeze is on that list. Off to a good start. So is Jamie Carroll, who's not in the lineup. Kemp leads the majors with that 449 average, 534 on base percentage. And already eight steals on the young season. Be tough to double up. Cardinals pinching in. 
And you got a middle infield. A couple struggling hitters after Kemp. Right. Big curveball. <laughs> Kemp his weight back. Saw the curveball early, but he just missed it. Recognized it in that big yellow hammer. As Kyle does have an outstanding curveball. He's got the cutter. He's got multiple fastballs, two and four, and a changeup. The one two from McClellan. Another curveball hit foul. You wonder if the Cardinals will be more careful with the two, three, and four hitters in this Dodger lineup, considering the way everybody else is struggling after them. And even this situation here, you're ahead of Matt Kemp, Al, but you don't want to make a mistake to him with a guy on deck hitting 156. Well, that's the point. You, you know, you look at at the order, and you kind of dissect it, see where you have outs if you get into jams, and you bring up a good point is with Kemp, who right now is an extremely hot hitter, you are ahead in the count. Part of pitching is get ahead and then get the hitter to expand his zone and get himself out. But you, the only thing you have to do is make sure you get the next two guys out that are struggling. Mislocation there, but couldn't do anything with the pitch. Almost one of the issues that you could say it's an issue that McClellan has to deal with going from the bullpen to the starting rotation. You can't pitch around everybody as a starter. Right. As a reliever, you're used to thinking that way. Who's the guy I want to avoid to keep them from beating us? And the luxury also as a, as a starter, you know you can you can afford to give up a run or two. Fly ball to set shallow center field. In comes Rasmus, not very deep. Are they going to make him throw? They do. And he throws a strike to the plate. Short hopped by Laird and a big pitch for McClellan. Getting Matt Kemp to fly out to center field. Shortstop number five on That was a big pitch right there, and you know, as you said, you, you don't want a pitcher to get into that psychology of thinking that you can pitch around everybody. Because at some point you have to face these right. guys and get them out. But now you have the luxury of retiring the hot hitter and go after a guy that's struggling. Make sure he stays that way. We, we talked about it last night, Ricky. Look at that. Look at that swing again. That is a wild swing, Al. Very much out of control. You know, they got him here because they were hoping to get. You know, 20 plus home runs like he had 28 last season. <laughs> he is swinging so hard. You know, you contrast that to the home run swings that we've seen from Lance Berkman. Just a nice smooth, put the bat on the ball, and Uribe is just jumping out of his shoes to hit every pitch. 0 2 calls for the breaking ball. Hanger, but because of that wild and out of control swing, he's way, way out in front. So he almost, Gerald Laird, almost saying, okay, bounce this curveball up there. I you know I got a man at third base, but he's, I'm going to block the ball. Fastball away, just get it way out there. See how he's set up completely out of the strike zone. Just a waste pitch, but it's almost so far outside that it, it, it doesn't have an effect. You'd like it to be close enough so it would have a purpose. Yeah, but Gerald Laird was that far. He was sitting in the middle of the left hand batter's box. Back to the curveball. And a swing and a miss. He strikes out Uribe. With Dodgers at the corner, we're through one. No score from Chavez Ravine. FoxSportsMidwest.com is your home for exclusive Cardinals coverage. Plus, follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest Cardinal updates. FoxSportsMidwest.com, the place for Cards fans. Matt Holliday has hit the Dodgers very well in his career, and he has also hit Clayton Kershaw well. The odd thing about his success against the Dodgers really hasn't been here so much. Absolutely. I noticed that. But 100 points are more higher on the road or at, at his home ballpark. And a lot of that in Colorado. Well, of course, and he faced them an awful lot, being in the same division. Three forty-six career average against the Dodgers. 
Kershaw trying to quiet the Cardinal bats and the bats Al have just been unbelievable. Four straight 16 plus hit games. Just the 10th team since 1920 to do that. Swing and a miss by Holiday. One and two. Now one of the keys for Kershaw is what he's done the last couple pitches. If you can throw in the case of a left handed pitcher get inside on right handed batters. Have success being able to throw to the glove side. Ball hit hard in the right center field and. Ethier makes the play. Kind of nonchalantly. Had his sights on that the whole way. Well hit by Matt Holliday. Ricky, don't you find that most left handers, just about all of them throw to some degree across their body. Yeah. So they they always have much better command down and away to a right handed batter. But if you can still get inside on the right handed batters, keep them honest, get in there, and you really have something going. I would think Kershaw out would be a little tough to pick up as well. He almost has a two part motion. He hesitates and a little herky jerky, but that doesn't seem to affect his control. His control is good. No, but it, it, it does throw up the timing of a hitter. And talking with Rick Honeycutt, Dodgers pitching coach, said this kid just has such talent that the first couple of years he really just got by on his immense talent. But now he's got that talent and he's got a better understanding of how to pitch. He's a grinder too that you know he doesn't have to have his best stuff. He will go out there and just has a will to win. You get the sense that he will someday be a perennial all star. He's that good and again just 23 years of age 6 3 2 17 from Texas is actually a high school teammate of Matthew Safford the NFL quarterback. And a walk to David Freeze. Pretty good location David Freeze gets the call. Set up inside the ball is down the way. Number 21 Ellen Craig is down and you saw that uh, you saw where David Freeze wasn't going to just get out of the batter's no. box. He was waiting for Joe West who runs a tight ship to give the call. Now one thing about Kershaw also he has one of the best pickoff moves. Well, he'll help his catcher and control the running game and if you stray out there not paying attention he can pick you off. Alan Craig getting the start in right field for the Cardinals Lance Berkman much better from the left side than he is from the right. Good time to get some at bats for Craig. Almost got him. He has one of the better moves. You don't see a guy really take you know his his sign from the stretch but watch how high the hands are. Started to go on that force false move but uh, was able to get back that wasn't the a move. Yet. No it seemed like a pretty simple move yeah, there and simple. almost fooled David freeze. Uh, hands so held high then he's got the glove about the neck level. That's unusual too yes. for a left hander to keep his hands so high at the stop. But of course it's, it makes it the ability to have that very quick throw he lifts the front leg. You know straight up so that allows him to go to first base. Once you bring, break the plane and take that front leg and bring it back and break the plane, then you have to go to the plate. Three and zero oh, as he's worried about freeze. He has fallen behind Alan Craig. Craig has some pop. Dodgers deep in the outfield, straight up on the infield. You'd have to assume he'd be taking here. And he is and it's the first strike to Craig. Notice that uh, you know Kershaw really does have that ability to get in on the right hand batters but a few times now when they've asked for that pitch in he's really not getting it in staying out over the plate. Good pitch to take to right. Will freeze run here three one pitch. That's not the A move that's the nope, that's, that's the C or, R C, C or D or E move there. I, I just don't know my alphabets well enough to go down to <laughs> R D. <laughs> we don't want to push you Al. Thank you. <laughs> Three one. 
And a base hit to left field for Alan Craig. Cardinals first hit of the night. And two runners aboard now for the Redbirds for Gerald Laird. Doesn't it make sense to give Alan Craig a, an opportunity to play here in place of Berkman, who is a switch hitter, but as you said, better left handed. But right there in the middle of the plate, saying, hit me. And Alan Craig, a lot like Holiday and Pujols, hits the ball so hard that many times his ground balls will, will go on through because they've been hit so hard. Never seen anybody as good at that as Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn had more ground balls that would scoot through the infield. He always hit the ball hard with some top spin. They yes. would just jump past infielders. He had about 3,000 of those, if I remember correctly. Laird takes a strike at the knees. Average at 214, spelling Yadier Molina. Molina now was hit last night in the ninth inning of the game on his bicep on a foul tip, but Tony. Saying that has nothing to do with him not starting tonight. Just more interested in him starting with Carpenter pitching tomorrow. And there's a base hit to right field for Laird. And Freeze is being held up. It sure makes the the decision a lot easier when you've got a player like Gerald Laird that can handle a pitching staff and also is starting to swing the bat pretty well. Three hits his last start. And here he gets a, a nice start to this one Tyler as he drives Green. the ball the opposite field with bases loaded for Tyler Green. Great on our Fox Mo Al when we watch hitters and their approach to the ball, how there's so little movement with the bottom half. And then you contrast that with guys that you know lift the front leg up and have so much movement. And, and it's all trying to get that trigger mechanism timing to try and get to that hitting stage. Bases loaded for the Cardinals. An opportunity here in the second. Tyler Green batting in the eighth spot and playing second base giving Skip Schumacher the night off. Only one left hander in the lineup and that's Colby Rasmus. Wouldn't mind another performance like in the ninth inning last night from Tyler Green. Two run uh, single. The 1 0 to Green. Ball two. And again behind a Cardinal hitter. And a hitting count for Tyler Green. Kyle McClellan will hit next. Maybe he's being careful with him. But he's going to, because yeah, he's so, loaded. because, but he's so afraid of this guy. Yeah. Got the game winning hit in his, his win last time out. Kyle. And Kyle's putting some fear in National League pitchers' minds. Really doesn't matter I, if he I can don't hit. Think so, yeah, it really doesn't matter if he can hit anyway, does it? No. He just keeps pitching and getting six plus innings in that Cardinal rotation. But it doesn't hurt that you're a good enough athlete that you can contribute offensively. Two and one the count to Tyler Green. There's that fastball in the inside corner, Al, you're talking about. Perfect location. Sneak it in there. Now his last start he threw a lot more sliders than curveballs because his curve really wasn't working. And he has both of those pitches. Base is loaded for the Redbirds. Kershaw is set. The pitch breaking ball and he strikes out. Tyler Green missed opportunity there for Green. And now it will be up to Kyle McClellan. Cardinals are going to score here in the second. See with that big curve ball right there and you know following the 94 mile an hour fastball in on the hands. That is a tough pitch to hit. But we shouldn't be surprised. You know, Kyle two for five. You see the two RBIs got both of those in his last start. He was an all state. In his junior and season year as a pitcher and first baseman. And Missouri plays pretty good baseball. Yes they do. Strike one to McClellan. At the very least, you're making Kershaw throw a lot of pitches. That may help later on. That's right. There's always a benefit. You know, even when you don't score, he's already up to 33 pitches here in the second inning. 
sooner you can knock that starter out get into their long relief the better you are. We thought that curveball might be coming. Yeah. Really is his strikeout pitch. Kershaw already with two strikeouts on the night. He's walked a batter. Cardinals with a couple of hits in this inning. And they're just 14 away from another 16 hit night. I'll be counting. The 1 2 to McClellan. Curveball high. He hung that one and didn't get the call. Pretty good. Uh, I for McClellan to lay off those two curveballs. Just trying to protect here. The 2 2. Fouls it back. Pretty good swing. A little bit late. Well, if you're if you're Kershaw and you sit there and you say, you watch the way he swung at that fastball, you go, wait a minute, I better I don't think even he's a pitcher. You know, you have great respect for him, but not afraid to now go back to the breaking ball. Chris Carpenter working on his grip for tomorrow. Another foul ball. A fastball got this one a little more in, but Kyle's making him work. Pretty good at bat here for the so Cardinal starter. Six pitches now, making him work. Freeze, Craig, and Laird are the runners for the Cardinals. No score, top of the second inning. Kershaw and McClellan. From the stretch, the pitch. Another foul ball. He's getting a piece of it. He sure is. Joe West needs some more baseballs. Not ready to get a hanger. Thinking the same thing. But as a pitcher, and a guy that has the stuff that Kershaw, you, you have to believe that you can get every pitcher out. Absolutely. You know, whether you don't have to trick him with breaking balls, you can still throw a fastball by him, but pretty good bat. It's even better. Well, at some point you start to think if you're Clayton Kershaw, I don't want to get beat here with my second best pitch or my third best pitch, although his curveball would be arguably his best pitch. Sure. If he hangs one or throws one in the dirt. Potential for a cardinal run. And he certainly doesn't want to go three and two. The two two. He is on the inside corner. Strike three says Joe West. Strikeout number three for Kershaw. It's not too late to get a 2011 season ticket plan. Choose from full season, 40 game or 27 game plans. Each plan includes a hefty discount off the gate price, plus lots of additional perks. For details, visit Cardinals.com today. Night baseball from Los Angeles. Good pitching matchup, the Dodgers and the Cardinals. The Cardinals won game number 1,000 against the Dodgers in their career, although there's some debate about the actual numbers or people that weren't born in 1890 trying to add up all those numbers. But according to the Cardinals, it was game win number 1000 and the Dodgers have won 998. Yeah, it's been amazing. I can remember ever since being in the booth. It seems like the longest separation between these two clubs was about five or six games in their storied history. First pitch fly ball to center field. One pitch, one out. Now the Cardinals have played extremely well here at Dodger Stadium. They're only five games under 500. Dodgers, lifetime in this ballpark. That would have to be, I believe, probably the best uh, of any National League club. Hard to think about the Cardinals and Dodgers without thinking of 1985. Jack Clark, Tommy Lasorda, Tom Needenfuhrer, Ozzie Smith, Jack Buck. Cardinal fans know the rest. Uh, Tom Meaden sure. One pitch, one out for McClellan. The 30 pitch inning for Clayton Kershaw in the second inning. 
funny. It looks like his eyes are watering. Really having a tough time. Doesn't have his sunglasses on. Which a lot of times he wears sunglasses because he thinks uh, the other team might be able to read his his eyes. But look at that right eye. Looks like it's hard to keep it open. You mentioned 85. Remember Terry Forrester? I do. Terry Forrester was a very good pitcher. Left-handed reliever. But he gave up a home run to Joe Morgan the last day of the season, which allowed the Atlanta Braves to win the West Division. Base hit the center. And you know, Terry Forrester was considered the, the most hated Dodger because of that home run that knocked them out. Now Arch is back. Back on that. Look at the extension on the arm and the torque. Feel like this, you throw a pitch like that and your shoulder is going to fall off. But Forster gave up that home run to Joe Morgan, and knocked the, the Dodgers out of the division, and and so after Needenfear gave up the home run to Jack Clark, you know. Forrester called up Needenfear and said, oh, don't worry about it. I'm still the most hated pitcher. But after Needenfear gave up the home run to Ozzy, he called him up and said, you just passed me. <laughs> At least he was being honest. <laughs> and we were out, out here in the West Coast, and when Needenfear got, re got released, his wife called up Whitey and was trying to find a job for her husband. And Whitey, Whitey told me, he said, well, we signed him because for everything he's done for the Cardinals, we, <laughs> we owe it to him. <laughs> the 0-2 to former Cardinal Aaron Miles hit on the ground to second. Tyler Green to Terrio and on to first. Double play. Perfect pitch. Two outs with one pitch. A good inning for Kyle McClellan. He's gone through two innings. Defense picking him up. No score from Dodger Stadium. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by the Stadium Sports Bar. Opening soon at Lumiere Place Casino and Hotels, the Pulse of St. Louis. And by Kia Motors. Southern California. The site of game nine of this 10 game West Coast trip. The Cardinals have really turned it around two losses in the first games in San Francisco. But they've worked it to a five and three road trip and they find themselves just a couple of games behind the Cincinnati Reds who won this afternoon Ryan Terrio top of the order for the Cardinals against Clayton Kershaw ball one 500 for the first time this year the Dodgers going in the other direction they lost four straight Cardinals really made Kershaw work last inning and we're going to make Jim Hayes work this inning as he joins us in the booth it doesn't feel like work though cat talking to you just glad you're with us what do you got I'm glad I'm glad to be along for the ride with you guys you know we had Lance Berkman on the uh, pregame show sitting out tonight up until he's uh, called upon to pinch hit good chance of that and we kind of talked about this binge that he's been on six home runs in five games ten hits in that stretch and I, I just wanted to know what he thought about what's going on 13 out of 14 games he played up until tonight where he sits out and he said you know I'm not made of glass I can play I asked him uh, to comment on what John Mazalock told me about him that he's energized now and he said well I mean I am energized but I'm healthy that's the main thing it takes time to come back from knee surgery and he says this is who I am and who I think I can be and he said it's not like I'm 40 years old and I think you guys would agree defensively he's been fine. You know there was a lot of concern about whether or not he could play in the outfield and he said there's one or two balls he can think of that he misplayed out there. But otherwise he's fairly comfortable and he's getting better as we go along. What do you think Al about his outfield play. It's fine. I felt all along that he would not have a problem. He's an athlete. He's a baseball player. You know, he's been out there before. Maybe it's been a while but you know you still get the breaks on the ball. It's easier for him to play right field than first because of his ability he's seen the ball come off the bat playing first base the same way as it comes in the outfield I didn't think it was going to be a problem that everyone else was so concerned full count to Terrio 
And there's a base hit to left field. Cardinals third hit of the night. And Terrio is aboard for Colby Rasmus. Center field number 28. And as always, we have our AT&T trivia question. Name the only current National League Central team that Jerry Royce did not play for. The answer. The Chicago Cubs. I'm not sure I knew that Jerry and I were buddies with the White Sox. I came up uh, same time with Jerry and the St. Louis and Rittner High Rittner School High School. Had a very very nice career. I think he lives in Las Vegas and I know he's tried to gig at uh, broadcasting a little bit. He has triple A games AAA there AAA games there and he did do some of the West Coast games for the Dodgers or, or games when they went east for the Dodgers last few years. Classy yeah. man Jerry Rice. Every time you're around him and now he's a little trickster too so watch your oh, back. Oh yeah. But you almost got the sense that he was just a little too regal for the game of baseball. That's not the Jerry Rice I knew. <laughs> he might have changed Al. <laughs> yeah. They might have been fooling me. I feel that way about Al. By the way. <laughs> Reasonably, Regal? Reasonably so. King Al. Watch out he's behind me. I'm a bit of a trickster too. What do you guys make of uh, the tear that Colby's been on? You know, he tells me now it's not like last year. He's not listening to anyone. He's not reading stuff. He's got blinders, and uh, he's just focused on uh, game by game, not getting caught up in anything. The 2-0 to Colby, fouled off, and you know when when folks hear he's not listening to anybody, that that almost can sound negative, and certainly you don't mean it that way. But Al, that that that's a a trait that a player has to have at this level to be careful not to listen to too much isn't it. You've got to be your own biggest critic. You've got to assess your talent. I mean, it really doesn't matter what we say or you know anybody says just be honest with yourself and be your own biggest critic. You know when you, you know you, you gave that honest 100 percent effort that you were mentally and physically ready to play. Let's not uh, give the indication that he walks into the batting cage with McGuire with earmuffs on. That's he's right. listening to the people right. he's supposed yeah. to listen but, to. But even even there you have to listen and take in what you can use and kind of ignore some of it. I, I think one of the things is maturity. Yeah. You know, he's a young man that I think he misinterpreted constructive criticism or you know someone you know I've always felt that when when a coach was trying to make me better trying to help me make me a winning ball player. He was looking after me. I've always found when the coach stopped talking to me is when they gave up on me. Kershaw's moved to first. Terrio does have two stolen bases. Colby just looks so relaxed now. Really looks comfortable. Played in every inning on this road trip. That's a good thing. Yes. You like stability up the middle. Your roster. Rasmus has been very stable. This ball hit down the left field line, slicing foul. This has that sense that he's going to get a hit every at bat. I mean, he's not really giving at bats away. You think about last year, Jim, there were just a few times where you just thought Colby was overmatched, but yeah. I haven't seen that yet. I agree, and he's doing different things. He dropped down a bunt. We've right. seen him go with the pitch the opposite way quite a bit. Well, he's got so much talent that he's starting to understand what he can do on a baseball diamond and that he can dominate this game. Now the one thing we touched on a little bit now we're seeing that he's not bailing on breaking balls. You know, he's hitting them he's staying with them and he's hitting them for authority. He's starting to see more and more left handed pitching so he's more comfortable with those at bats and having better results. Will Terrio go? The 3 2 pitch instead, the first base. And this is one of those running counts, Al. There are nobody out. The Cardinals might want to stay out of the double play. Did you run here? He's more of a strikeout pitcher. Mm -hmm. You know, now Terrio is going to steal about 20 bases a year, so I think he's an exception. I send him. He's not going, fouled off by Rasmus. Pretty well, good swing there. One of the reasons why you may not want to send him is because you've got. A potential of a strikeout pitcher out there. 
Rojas has thrown out 25% of the base stealers. Rasmus he's, rarely hits in the double play. He's got the very good pickoff move. That's another reason why we may not want to send him because he's not going to get, you know, more than likely a real good jump. Not going again, and that pitch is low. Good eye for Rasmus. Albert Pujols has had a great series. All of a sudden, now the power has come back. I mean, look at that swing there. That very few hitters can hit that ball up. It's up and in, and hit a get on top of it, and hit the line drive. Hit three home runs in the last two days. His 40th multi-home run game last night. A couple runners aboard for Albert. Right here, 10 RBIs on the season. And here you are, that Kershaw. This is, you know, it may be another inning he escapes, but it's taken a toll. And you've got two men on, nobody out, and you've got the heart of this order coming up. You're going to expend an awful lot of mental and physical energy trying to get out of this inning. One strike to Pujols. Kershaw checks the runners. Curveball, strike two. Good breaker from the young left-hander. It's outstanding. Albert was six for 12 coming in. He, he struck out the first time, but Albert's not afraid to hit with two strikes. How about the last break of that curveball? It showed the top of the zone, but the catcher caught it at the knees. That's how much late break that one had. 0-2 oh, to Albert. Another curveball high. When Albert's hot now it seems that it doesn't really matter whether no. it's a fastball a changeup curveball he he can hit it all can hit it all and to all parts of the field. I talked to Albert after last night's game about the slow start and he said he was never worried about it he understands why the fans might have been concerned but he said. I wasn't worried because I know how to hit. I've been doing it for a while. Makes sense to me. Well, not only that, but if there's anybody that can handle the pressure of going through a free agency year, it's Albert Pujols, Agreed. and that's what was people were trying to make a big. Oh, he's, you know, the contract status is getting to him. Swing and a miss. Pujols strikes out for the second time. Kershaw really working here. In the early innings, strikes out the dangerous Albert Pujols. Uh, he got a few hangers and he got a little bit underneath that curveball. But like I said, even if Kershaw gets out of this inning, this has taken a toll. When when you talk about a pitcher laboring, you know this is an example of that. And you may get, you know still get out of these things, but you just don't do it. Uh, you know much more than two or three innings. And the Dodgers got some bad news as far as their bullpen was concerned today. Hong Chi Kuo, really their ninth inning, eighth inning guy who's been just a great setup man for Jonathan Broxton, has some back issues and he was put on the 15 day disabled list. So now no left handers in their pen. And they lost a good one, at least for 15 days. Yeah, no doubt about it. And it's just kind of been a lingering, you know, a little muscle strain. And there's one little spot that when he reaches back and tries to finish off a pitch it grabs him and so early in the season get it taken care of now. One and one. To the Cardinal left fielder Matt Holliday. And your point about Kershaw throwing so many pitches we're going to see some innings out of that Dodger bullpen if he continues this way and not a Dodger bullpen that you're that worried about in terms of the first three or four guys out of the pen and without quo. Even more so. Yes, and we've already seen the bullpen in action, so they're they're getting some weary arms down there. By the way, we appreciate you giving us the status of Quo. Wow. I said that just because Jim's standing here. I thought he'd appreciate it. Went right over his head. No, it didn't. It was just quite a stretch. I thought if I haven't <laughs> thought about it, I might cramp up. Holiday shaking his head. It looks as if that ball might have hit a fan down the right field line. Is a, is a bit of a 
Late swing slicer. Oh, that was just a rocket and the fans just really have to pay attention. Joe West taking a little time here and he's you know Matt maybe a little shooken up here but uh, Joe thought he might get a little TV time right well, Rick isn't that, gonna, isn't that your yeah, premise Rick, I said that once and then I, Joe got his boy I, seem, I seem to recall it three or four times hey, Joe <laughs> Joe summons me to the club uh, to the locker room the umpires locker room yesterday right when he was getting his makeup and put on for TV and he That's uh, Rick said that and he definitely wanted to find out uh, Rick's uh, home address and now not look, not worried. Now look, if an umpire can't take a little ripping, they're probably in the wrong in the wrong line, right? Yeah, they get they get schooled <laughs> on that pretty early. And of course, to be an umpire, and let me say something nice about umpires, but but I mean it. Umpires are the best in the world at what they do. Here's yeah. that pitch. Look at this rocket there, and you know you're just sitting there going, please don't hit someone, and apparently it did, and well that'll bother you. Oh, Joe. You know, I mean, Joe West, you've, you've got to realize, I mean, he's trying to take charge of this game, but he's doing something for Matt Holiday right now to kind of relax. And, and even the pitcher feels that a bit. I mean, you almost feel responsible in some way. You're not, but. On the, and I want, I want to say it was in the 70s that Manny Mota, our good friend, hit a line drive over the visitor's dugout, hit a young boy, and you know, everything appeared to be okay, but, uh, you know, later that, uh, that night, you know, he died. Mm. And Manny you have Mota, to live with that. Manny Moda, one of the best pinch hitters in the history of this game, had the chance to visit with him before the game here. 60 years in the big leagues. Manny will always tell about a bat that he had against me. In St. Louis, checking a one run lead, you know, two outs in the ninth inning, tie and run on base. The count reached 3 2, and he fouled off 13 pitches. Now, they weren't all strikes, I'll guarantee you that. But, and eventually I won because I walked him and got the next hitter out. But what an at bat. Who will win this battle? Matt Holiday fouls another one off. 2 2 the count. Kershaw on the mound, looking for his third victory of the season. Dodgers have lost four straight. They find themselves five and a half games behind Colorado in the early going. Colorado showing themselves to be one of the best teams in the National League thus far. One of the best players in Tulowitzki. 11 and 2. The 2 2 pitch is low. And how about the trade that sent Holiday from Colorado to Oakland? We got another pretty good player in that deal. Great young player, Carlos Gonzalez. And we got Gonzalez and a couple pitchers. And Antonio LaRusso with a decision here. Do you send the runners? Three and two, one out. They're not going. Curveball is a bit high, I guess. Wow, it sure looked good. Another big pitch inning for Clayton Kershaw. That was his 29th and only one out thus far. Rick Gunning got out to visit. Join Major League Baseball and the Major League Baseball Players Association in helping Japan's children in need. Visit UNICEF.org or text JAPAN to 864-233 to donate $10. Standard text messaging and transactional fees apply. And for more information, visit MLB.com slash Japan Relief. Another opportunity for the Redbirds here in the third inning. David Freeze walked in the second. He was later stranded at third. Terry O's the runner at third. Rasmus at second. And Matt Holliday with that walk is the runner at first. Now they know Kershaw is a real battler out there, but obviously doesn't have his best stuff. And he's going to be more than likely in the 70s in his pitch count before this inning's over. And the Cardinals could make that worse by picking up a couple of runs here. To make them really feel it. David Freeze swinging a hot bat. Fifth in the National League in batting. Six RBIs on the season and a chance for some more here. The one strike is fouled off. 
to the right side. 0 2. David has shown that ability as a young player. A great asset that he has the ability to be an RBI machine. Got great power to the opposite field. Get on that scoreboard. The very least. You know, get the sack fly. And on this road trip, how many wild pitches have we seen? We've seen a ton. In runs. We have seen a ton of them. Kershaw with the big curveball. It could happen. Does not give up very many home runs for a power pitcher. Curveball, half swing, spoiled by David Freeze. Just trying to loft that ball in the outfield. That's all he's trying. To do. It has been a slog for Kershaw, but pretty good considering where the Cardinal offense was <laughs> prior to the start of this one. But obviously he's on the hook right now. And what will the Cardinals do with him while he's on the hook the 0 2 pitch to freeze. This is low. One of those Cardinals that's really hot is Yadier Molina not in the lineup. Gerald Laird. Gets the start today cat we were concerned that maybe there's something wrong with Yadi getting hit maybe by the foul tip but Tony has said that's not the case. Yeah he looked at uh, the schedule of games and wanted Yadi to go tomorrow so figured give him tonight off and as you guys have point out Laird has played very well. Well, that was one of the goals that the Cardinals have seen Yachty the last two years because of his workload. You know that he kind of broke down or the knee has become an issue late in the season. So they they went out with the intent of having Gerald Laird to play a lot more this year. And so they can spell Yachty and hopefully have him fresh for the entire season. Well Laird has been a starter in the past and a productive one. But Tony said how much time off Yachty will get depends on how Yachty feels. Curveball in the dirt, almost the wild pitch. Now Roboski was talking about, blocked by Barajas. Well, if you ask Yachty, you know he's going to say, "I want to play." So it's something that Tony has to make those decisions. And a guy like Yachty wants to play every day, but it will be to his benefit to get a little more rest. Bases loaded, full of Cardinals. David Freeze at the plate. Cardinal third baseman count two and two on him. And he fouls it off. Good swing there right on that one. Just missed it. A little bit underneath. He had that one time down. And that's it. You know the Cardinals have done a good job of recognizing that curveball and laying off some of the tough pitches. And his fastball 94 but obviously everybody getting to the big leagues can hit fastballs. And you spoil off a terrific pitch just to keep your bat alive. So even though the Cardinals don't have any runs yet, the fact that they're hitting so well is is really leading them to be able to spoil these good pitches, take the certain pitches that they're taking, and make Kershaw work hard. Well, it's, we're in the third inning with one out, base loaded, and he's throwing his 78th pitch. And here it is, curveball, and it's hit into the outfield, medium depth. Terrio the runner at third. The throw is going to come in from Ethier to second base. And the Cardinals take the lead one to nothing. Great at bat for David Free. And that's what you expect from David to go up there and be a very competitive bat. It was that and more. How about right fielder number 21, Alan Cray. Ryan Terrio, the Cardinal shortstop, is safe at home, safe and secure New York life. One nothing Cardinals. I love that at that. That's such a baseball moment right there. Sure. Where somebody can just foul off good pitches and then hang in there and get the job done. And as a pitcher, when you just can't get that third strike by someone and you keep on foiling off your good pitches, you know it's you're gonna about hang one or you're gonna give them something eventually that they can drive. Alan Craig one for one. He singled in the second inning, trying to make this inning even worse for Clayton Kershaw. Very quiet Dodger crowd. Kershaw with three walks. Uncharacteristic. Ball hit hard to right field, but no problem for Ethier. A lot of work for Kershaw. Escapes with just one Cardinal run. They take the lead. Kershaw will lead it off when we come back. Take the Cardinals with you wherever you go this season. Subscribe to MLB.tv today to see every Cardinals game live or on demand. 
on your computer and your favorite devices. Visit Cardinals.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. David Freeze, RBI sacrifice fly, 1-0 Cardinals. Kyle McClellan out for his third inning of work. He's been a little bit more efficient than the batter at the plate, Clayton Kershaw, who is not a very good hitter. Kershaw is up into the 80s in his pitch count. And McClellan's thrown 33. Right to Terrio. Out number one. The guy that's not a very good hitter almost got a hit. I was, I was, you were about to be yelled at. Eat your own uh, words. Well, it's happened before. <laughs> Cardinal GM John Mazalock has rejoined the team, and uh, I asked him, of all the things that have gone right this season, what are some of the things that stand out? And he said they all knew, and Al was kind of touching on this earlier, they all knew Kyle McClellan could pitch, had a good repertoire. They weren't positive that he would be durable enough to get deep into games and he said he has and he's shown that ability and, and as Al points out that's a key for the Cardinals. There's a bunt right in front of the plate it's a fair ball and what do you know. Thank you. We'll take it. Yeah, in, in my mind if if a starting pitcher can't consistently go six innings he shouldn't be a starting pitcher you know and, and Powell would be the first one to understand that because you're asking the bullpen to go for uh, 12 outs or more. That's hard to do. But when you're asking for nine, and then with some of the stars we got, you know, you, you've got a couple times through the order, you're gonna, it's gonna be six outs. You know, then you keep that bullpen fresh. You, know, you can mix and match and and make everybody uh, contribute, and nobody gets a tremendous workload. And the workload for a starting pitcher guys is not always about how strong and how hard a guy throws. There's just something about conditioning yourself to be able to throw seven or eight innings that it's a lot harder than it sounds. It's not just a matter of strength. There's a muscle endurance factor in there that that has to do with all the small muscles in your shoulder and your elbow. And if you're not conditioned physically as a pitcher to do that that's a that's a long haul. And, and that's a byproduct what, what makes it difficult is because of the pitch count. Minor leagues, they won't really let you go more than 80 or 90. Oh, my, usually, my first year as a starter, I had two back-to-back -back games: 163 pitches and 172 pitches. There's a pretty good pitch right there from Kyle McClellan. Cat, we appreciated the visit. One nothing, Cardinals. Bottom of the order for the Redbirds. One nothing, Cardinals. Gerald Laird bunts the ball right to the first baseman. Bunted it too hard. And that's one pitch one out. That's not the way the Cardinals wanted to start the fourth. Join the Cardinals Wits and Amor Azak by taking part in our second annual e-cycling drive. That's Monday April 25th and Tuesday the 26th. Bring your unwanted electronics to the ballpark village lot for collection. No fees will apply. For more information visit Cardinals.com slash Green Week. Here's the pitch total 81 for Kershaw just 40 for Kyle McClellan the Cardinals with the lead strike one to Tyler Green and you just mentioned it uh, Gerald Laird by trying to bunt right there Kershaw is hoping to have that real low inning efficient inning so really it's responsibility for Tyler Green to do what he's doing right now work this count a little bit don't let him have that you know really efficient and into where you, you get your second breath. Fouls that one off. Sometimes a double edged sword though Al if you're trying to work a lot of counts you may be taking the pitch you can handle too. So you also don't want to be defensive at the plate but clearly you'd prefer that Kershaw gets 10 15 20 pitches this inning. Yeah but I mean at the very least you know you take that first strike. Second strikeout for Tyler Green. Brings in Kyle McClellan and Betting quick inning so far. 46, Kyle McClellan. McClellan sitting on that 333 average, Al. 
<laughs> might no, want to take he's a, not. Might he, want to take a picture of that. Ah, he's he's a he's a ball player. Yes, he is. And he's shown that he knows what he's doing in that batter's box. Kyle's been a real leader in this organization for a couple years, even though he's young. He has been a representative on the players' union. Uh, that's quite a tribute to it. Sure is. You know, a young player like that, and you know that his teammates think enough of him to handle that very responsible job. The beginning of the players' association, the early years, you had to have. One of your biggest stars be the player rep. There's a good at bat. Makes him work a little bit. Walk number four for Kershaw, and he just walked the pitcher. Now, with Rick, two outs. You had to have, and you had to have one of your superstars be the player rep because they were going to be traded. Management thought so poorly, you know, that if it was a lesser player, they were immediately traded. So you really had to have one of your established stars take that extra responsibility. When I got traded to the White Sox. Jim Fergosi said the players are going to vote you the player rep. Because I don't want one of the star players to do it. That's what he told me. <laughs> exactly. So he said I was at the player rep regardless of what the players and thought. I didn't, even know any, I didn't even know anybody yet. I guess that was the point. But of course you know it's not the idea that the manager is supposed to be the player. I understand. <laughs> I know. I understand. Ryan Terrio fouls it straight back first pitch swinging Terrio bounced out and singled and scored the lone run in this game in the third inning Cardinals have made Clayton Kershaw work one of the best young pitchers in the game of baseball strikeout artist really a solid guy too. I've had a chance to meet him he spoke at Bush Stadium last year at the Christian Day at the ballpark to the fans there and stayed after a game after a Dodger loss and with Jamie Carroll and A.J. Ellis stayed after just to address the crowd and during the winter he went on a mission trip to Zambia yeah and this was, he and his wife are concerned about the orphans there and yeah, they helped build a school and and uh, they're in Zambia and he donates one hundred dollars for every strikeout and this is a strikeout pitcher uh, to endeavor to try and stop poverty in the continent of Africa. Take a lot of strikeouts, won't it? Yes, it will. But he's doing his part. Yes, he's doing his part. 23 years of age, realizes he's got a platform and he's got an opportunity to help. 2 1 pitch from Kershaw at the top of the zone. Strike two. And, you know, folks forget that about these, some of these major league players that they are as young as they are. Just think of somebody that you know, a niece, nephew, your son, your neighbor that might be 23 how could they handle this I mean it's just amazing that they handle this notoriety as well as they do and they're under a, a microscope today you know you really feel sorry for players that you know that whatever they do they're going to be scrutinized uh, you've got cell phone cameras everything like this and if you're talking about some of the social media, it doesn't have to be true. There's a long drive to left off the bat of Terrio. It's to the track, to the wall. It's off the top of the wall. And the Cardinals are going to take the lead two to nothing. Close play at the plate. Terrio gets caught between third and second. And he will be eventually tagged out by Aaron Miles, but not before the Cardinals score their second run. Ryan Terrio drives in. The pitcher Kyle McClellan costly walk by Kershaw McClellan doing it all. The 2011 Cardinals crew kids club presented by Rawlings Sporting Goods is quite the deal for just twenty five dollars kids get Cardinal tickets a large duffel bag a bobblehead toothbrush holder Cardinals silly bands and more and don't forget about the end of the season party at Bush Stadium sign up the young Cardinal fans in your life. Go to cardinals.com slash kids club. Kyle McClellan been given a 2 nothing lead. He helped himself in the fourth inning. A two out walk. And he scored on the Ryan Terrio double off the left center field wall. He was an athlete. The way he ran the bases there. And what I loved was not knowing whether this could be a play at the plate or not. He just went ahead and executed the slide, which he should do. You know, 
go out there and, and slide. It wasn't a play. They got the force out Ontario. And there are a couple of huge Al Roboski fans. The lady on the right is Krista Tesro. She in is an red. actress on the right, right yeah. in the red, of course. She is from St. Louis, an from, actress. Yes. She's here with her husband, Glenn, and she just thinks Al Roboski is the coolest thing on the planet. She's actually telling the lady behind her, I got to meet Al Roboski today. Uh, what a nice uh, young lady and been in uh, Days are a lot. Guiding light. Guiding light for 10 plus years. From Incarnate Word. From Incarnate Word. Came out here and very quickly started a uh, career. Went to New York to do the uh, soap operas. And Ricky, you, you surprised me, but I was telling her that you know all the ball players in the 70s, their afternoon was filled with with soap operas. They certainly were. Some of their nights were soap operas too, Al. <laughs> well, that was a different one. There's a base hit to right, and we're going to test the arm of Alan Craig, and Ethier thought better of it. Leadoff hit for Ethier, and that pushes his hit streak to 13 straight games. This guy has a beautiful swing from the left side. Yeah, good. Good hitter. Uh, you, could, you could understand that this guy is one of the better hitters in the league from his rookie year and we'll have to watch Kyle have to run those bases a little bit and it's just too easy to say that a guy can't run the bases and then go back out and pitch but you know get the ball down that 13 game hit streak is the longest in Major League Baseball this season longest current streak yeah, his career high is 16 so not far away from it and as long as last year was only nine. Matt Kemp flew out the center in the first. And base hit in the fourth. Two Dodgers aboard as they try to answer the two Cardinal runs. Cardinals with a run in the third and a run in the fourth. He is just a good hitter as well. This is the danger part of the Dodger order. Three, four, and five. Well, you see that ball running in, but he opens up with his hips. The two base hits got the ball up a little bit, and that's not Kyle. But here you do have an area where you got hitters that are struggling, but they are much better than their season averages right now. And a fly ball to center field. It's deep, but Rasmus. Able to make the play going back. That'll send Ethier to the third. One pitch to Uribe results in and out. And I think the Cardinals will take that. Long fly ball in and out. Well, get that first out. You still have the double play in order. And Kyle has a lot of weapons for where he can get a ground ball after another struggling hitter. Remember Kyle McClellan, one of his assets coming out of the bullpen was not only could he retire right-handed batters, but he was very effective against lefties also. And here's a lefty, only 105 with runners in scoring position. Loney, a 26 year old first baseman, he's a very good fielder. And he's had a poor second half, so his hitting troubles have been extended. Really started middle of the season last year and just I, hasn't quite gotten his stroke back. He said right now he just doesn't want to hear from his hitting coach anymore. They're, they're, they've about talked each other out. Sometimes you get tired of talking. Jeff Pentland's the hitting coach here. Dave Hansen, the assistant. Yeah, they have a similar situation with the Cardinals. With two hitting coaches. One is recognized on the pension plan, and the other one is not. Mark McGuire, of course, is the hitting coach. Mike Aldretti does a lot of work with a lot of players as well, and we don't talk about him very much, but he's working just as hard. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of a neat... Uh, way of doing things you know because Aldretti was an outstanding hitter and a left handed hitter. obviously Mark right handed so you you know a lot of these left handed batters have somebody that they can go to and if somebody wanted some extra cage work you know that Aldretti can do the underhand toss or go do some things at home in the, the batting cage beyond the dugout. So you've got the players to work with. You've got the video to look at. You've got the video to dissect of other teams pitchers there. I mean there's a lot to do. 
a lot more to do than there used to be. And we get out of this inning here. I'll tell you kind of a neat little story that happened to Aldretti today, right? Down on the field. 1 0 pitch to Loney. McClellan looking for the double play. Did he go? No, says the third base umpire, Chad Fairchild. Tim Wallach, the third base coach, flashes the signs to James Loney. Runners at the corner for the Dodgers. 2 0 pitch is fouled off. Pretty good swing. Good rip at a 2 0 pitch, a little bit late. When the hitter's going well, they don't do that. No. They hit that pitch. They center that ball and drive it for productive uh, an RBI. But when you're a little bit off, you follow it back when you're lucky. And I really do look for a double play ball right here. McClellan hoping for a two hopper to Tyler Green. The Cardinals have already turned a double play. They did that in the second inning. Aaron Miles was at the plate. Cardinals have been pretty decent on the fielding side. It was a question mark coming into the season, but they've made the plays they've needed to make. And there goes the runner. The 2 1 pitch is fouled off. Decent jump by Matt Kemp, who already has eight stolen bases. And that was a good time to run. <laughs> Two nothing Cardinals. Kyle McClellan working hard in the home half of the fourth inning. Well, Laird wants to step off and go over the signs again. Second thought. You know, by the way, that Bach last night that we really felt like he didn't Bach was the first in his career over 2,000 innings. Curveball hit on the ground to Albert. He steps on the bag and comes home. And he's safe. The runner is safe at the plate, but I'm not sure he touched the plate. And he's still safe. Yeah, that's says Joe West. It's like by calling him safe, he had Joe West is saying that he touched the plate. Otherwise, he wouldn't have made, wouldn't the, have made call. the call. Cardinals tried to get the double play by Albert stepping on the bag and then throwing home. And the tag not made at the plate. Andre Ethier avoids Gerald Laird. Close play at the plate. Does he get him or doesn't he? There's out Albert one. Steps on it. He had, he had an out, you know, at second base, but he elects to go the play in front of him. And you see Ethier not running hard and does get around the tag, reaches back and touches home plate. And it's one of those plays where, and I, I think he gets a, a, obviously got around the tag, and it looks like he does touch home plate. Yep, yes, he clearly. does. Perfect call, Joe West right on it. There goes the runner. Play at third. He is safe at third. Again, the Dodgers avoiding the tag. This time it's Matt Kemp with the stolen base. Strong throw by Laird. It looks like he goes to the back half as the throw is right in front. And he is safe. They're sending him back now. It was the ball. I, did the ball hit the batter and deflect right into his glove? It looked like it was going to hit him, but because that call was not made right away, and that's exactly what it is. So the Dodgers have runners at first and second for Aaron Miles. You know, it, it looked like it was going to hit him, but because there was no deflection, or it must have deflected right into Lair's glove, and you know that all of a sudden you go, well. Maybe it didn't hit him, but it, yes, it hit the batter. Take away the stolen base. Barajas now the runner at first. Kemp the runner at second. Aaron Miles with a chance of getting the Dodgers back in this game. They trail two to one. McClellan.
And here's the hit by pitch. Take one more look at it. Does it hit him? Yep, right on the sleeve. And he calls him and calls time. But, you know, Gerald Laird does the right thing. He doesn't have time to wait and turn around and say, well, Mr. Umpire, what is that? That play. So you just go ahead and execute that throw and let the home plate umpire sort it out. It's amazing that players are allowed to not only let the ball hit them, but almost make the ball hit them. Yeah, spin into that it. Rule, that rule, an unwritten rule, really has changed over the years. It used to be you had to make a concerted effort to get out of the way. Uh, it's still in the rule book that an umpire's judgment. And there's a ground ball backhanded by Pujols to Kyle McClellan covering. And he gets out of the inning with just one run. It was a crazy inning. Dodgers pick up one. They trail the Cardinals in Los Angeles two to one. This date in history, Albert Pujols has given us a lot of these. April 16, 2006, a three home run game, including a walk off against the Cincinnati Reds closer at the time, David Weathers. Brought to you by Schnucks. Remember, that was early in the season in the left field area. The ballpark was not completed. So that's why you see a rare sign where not that left field section completely full. I think that was an Easter Sunday. Albert had a couple of three home run games, if I remember correct, on Easter Sunday. Swing and a miss right by Rasmus. There's the Al Raboski fan club. Krista and Glenn Tesro. Is that her mother still a big fan living in St. Louis? Exactly. No, she's watching tonight. Rasmus waves at a breaking ball. Clayton Kershaw just trying to get through as many innings as possible Pitcher. and he's kept his team close given and, that and 97 pitches right now they got the bullpen active former Cardinal Mike McDougal been a struggle all night but he has kept his team in this ball game. Cardinals only four hits this time last night they were in double figures. Breaking balls popped up. Barajas the catcher 10 year veteran makes the play for out number one. Barajas been around a long First time 35 years old. He knows how to catch a pop up. Back here on this area they have a display of. Of catching. Gloves and how that has evolved. And the one that was almost impossible to catch pop ups, the old pizza glove, you just had a hole, you know, just almost like a flat circle with a little hole in the middle to now where it's almost an extension of the first baseman's glove, the catcher's glove. And when it's a beach ball on the field. It wouldn't be Dodger Stadium if we didn't have a beach ball on the field. Things are getting back to normal. Yep. All the increased security took away a lot of the uniform police officers from first game back. Line drive to left down the line going to be a tough play and it drops in front of Gwynn Albert Pujols with his first hit of the night and the Cardinals fifth base hit. About hit the Dodgers five to four. It brings in Matt Holiday who has walked and flown out to right he hit that ball hard. Time about a pitcher every throws it, he's a fielder. In this case, you're really trying to help your <laughs> your outfielders. Are. The body English right there, wanting that ball to either be caught or probably more likely go foul. Came a contortionist. Over a hundred pitches for Clayton Kershaw. Well, that is the uh, E move. Now, step off and throw. <laughs> He's trying to set the Cardinals up, you think? That was almost like I got to get it all the way over there. Arms tired. He's throwing right. 100, 101 pitches. How come that doesn't count as another pitch?
you know, pitcher throws 101 pitches, but he's also throwing 8 to 10 pitches between every inning, throwing about 50 pitches to warm up. So over the course of a day, he'll throw closer to 200, 225 pitches. Kershaw set for Holiday. One and one. Holiday, we've mentioned, has hit the Dodgers very well in his career, mostly not here at Dodger Stadium, however. And he's had good numbers against Kershaw. Kershaw, two and one on the season, 1.37 earn run average. Mm. The low strike has not been called all night long by Joe West. Uh, Joe, who I talked to the other day, has lost a lot of weight and says his knees don't hurt anymore. So my suggestion is to bend them. <laughs> Al Roboski said that, not me, Joe West fans. But I've got a good relationship okay. with him. <laughs> and I guess I don't. <laughs> According to what he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Three and one. Now you see most umpires will purchase their equipment from Joe West. He has his own line of catching or umpiring equipment. Ball four. Another walk and more pitches delivered by Clayton Kershaw and he the West is might only he may only get through five innings now. There's the West vest you're talking about. I would I would imagine everyone of his crew has his gear as he's the crew chief. But most umpires will wear his equipment and notice how he proudly displays it outside. Very entrepreneurial. <laughs> he's marketing right now. Now they tell players can't do that but apparently it's OK for the umpires. That is interesting. Major League Baseball very concerned about what players do. Of course players can wear whatever shoes they want with whatever logo they want on the shoes. They have to be the proper color of course. But you are not allowed to put anything even remotely suggesting a company on any other part of your body fly ball to left field. Ricky, there was a day when the Cardinals, like all ball clubs, wore just solid black shoes. Right fielder, and the year Fred. that the Cardinals started wearing red shoes was the year that Lou Brock was going for the stolen base record. And Adidas came out with this red shoe. And for about three weeks, every day, Reggie Smith and would go to Lou, said, Lou, have you broken in the shoes enough? Can we wear them now? Can we wear them now? Right. It was the funniest thing where Lou was trying to be cooperative, but you know, he was also trying to make history, and you, you didn't want to have him wear the shoes until he was comfortable with it. But once we got to wear our red shoes, boy, we turned the season around. Played better in red? No, but <laughs> <laughs> you felt better. <laughs> well, Lou did go on to break the, the singles season uh, stolen base record. Alan Craig at the plate. And Kershaw must be tired by now. Yeah. He has thrown so many pitches. He's just not exactly sharp and walked a batter in this inning. I oh, see. I mean, they're trying to get him out there, get him through five innings, give him a, an opportunity to win this game. Five walks for Kershaw. A lot of foul balls. Out of, you know, long counts. But again, not getting that low strike all night long has made it a little worse for him. And, and think about it, you know, how little damage the Cardinals have been able to do without getting the pitch, a low pitch, which you, you preach to and are taught to throw the I'll ball give, down there. And I'll give Joe West credit on this. He's been consistent on that low pitch. He hasn't really given it to anybody. The 2 1. Breaking ball. It's hit deep to left field. Back goes Gwynn to the track, to the wall, and this ball is gone. A home run for Alan Craig. A three run shot. And the Cardinals lead five to one.
Alan Craig's first home run of the year, and it's a big one. Uh, Alan Craig, you've got to give him playing time so he can stay ready. Hang and break and ball. He's got good power. He's demonstrated in the minor leagues that he can be a very good offensive weapon. Trying to learn how to play off the bench. And right now he's showing you that, you know, Berkman is very intriguing, but the fact that he's a switch hitter, but historically he's always struggled right handed. It's a good alternative. A lot of smiles in the Cardinals dugout. Pitching change for the Dodgers. Craig knocks out Kershaw, 5 1 Cardinals. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Jack in the Box, where you can get anything on the menu any time of day. And by Steel. Are you ready for a steal? What a beautiful look at Dodger Stadium. Here inside the ballpark, Alan Craig and his bench buddies are all smiles as Craig gets a chance to play here today. And he's two for three, and that home run off of Clayton Kershaw knocks him out of the box. He's also a Southern California guy, too. So down around Temecula, which is closer to San Diego. But it has to be a big thrill to hit a home run at this ballpark. And all of a sudden now, that 2 1 ball game is 5 1. And Mike McDougal takes over for the Dodgers. A double switch. We'll tell you about that. First pitch is high and in. Watch out, Laird. Mike McDougal throws very hard still. That one 94 miles an hour. Good start this year. Not not so effective out of the Cardinal bullpen last year, although he did have some signs of brilliance. He still yeah. throws hard. 17 games with St. Louis last year, limited right handed batters to 208. Laird pops it up foul. Signed a minor league deal on July the 6th. He has 70 career saves. He saved 20 games as recently as 09 with the Nationals. He was an all star with Kansas City back in 03. And he had a career high 27 saves. McDougal will bat in the eighth spot. Aaron Miles is now out of the game. Jamie Carroll has taken over. And how about Kansas City? 10 and 4. Surprising a lot of people is, but they have, uh, I mean, they've turned things around. They have recognized the best minor leagues in all of baseball last year. McDougal strikes out Gerald Laird. The top of the fifth inning is over, but not before the Cardinals add three runs, thanks to Alan Craig. The three run homer by Alan Craig makes it five to one Cardinals, bottom of the fifth inning. Fox Sports Midwest is proud to be your exclusive home for Cardinal baseball, bringing you 152 games this season. Make sure you don't miss tomorrow's game against the Dodgers, 3 o'clock. Log on to FoxSportsMidwest.com and check to see if your video provider will be carrying the game. If not, we encourage, encourage you to call your video provider to let them know you don't want to miss any more of the Cardinal action this year. 5-1 Cardinals. You got AT&T Ubers? I do not. I did. So I was missing some games. They got a phone call from me. I'll call them for you too, Al. Hate to have your family miss the game. Throw you away. That was when I was home earlier this week. Couldn't do my job without going down to the studio and watching you guys. And they love having you in the studio. They do a great job on the post game. Pat Paris, Max Linewan, more to talk about. You better believe it. Well, they made that very easy for me and tremendous job, and we don't give them enough credit. The hardest part was staying up past my bedtime. I won't even ask what that is. 3 a.m. 5 1 Cardinals. Fly ball to right. Handled by Alan Craig. What a big home run for him. Kyle McClellan starting to settle down here. Left fielder, Tony Quinn Jr. Well, give him a little breathing room. You know, the pressure of trying to pitch when every pitch could either tie the game or give the other side a, a lead. Now you got a little cushion with a four run def, uh, you know, differential. 
pitch count very economical at just 60. Cruising right along. Tony Gwynn Jr. Bunted out in the third inning singled in the first. The 0 1 pitch to him hit back to McClellan. And another simple out. An athletic play right there. Good example when you once you release the ball and you become a fifth infielder, field your own position. Now it's, it's not the most important thing for a pitcher, but it sure can help you win a ball game. Now, Al, do we make too much of what we've said for years in this game of baseball that it's really important for a pitcher to go out after a three run inning and your right fielder hits a home run and gives you a big lead that it's a real important inning for you to go out and shut the door. Do we make too much of that or do you I think that's think important? So. I, I think you really do have to mentally challenge yourself to make sure you reward your teammates for their offensive effort and show them that you appreciate it and go put up a zero. I think it's one of those little ways to trick yourself mentally to stay focused and give the team a sense of settling into sure. a lead almost well you know we've seen a lot of times where if you go out and walk that first guy you're just inviting the other team to say hey we're still in it so if you can go out there and just be very aggressive and you see kind of stretch there a little bit hopefully that's not indication of something stiffening up but if you can go out and and Tell by your pitching, your mannerisms on the mound, and just your, the way you present yourself that I've got a lead. I know how to protect it. This game is over. Eventually, that you know the offensive team kind of starts saying, "Hey, we'll look to tomorrow. You know, this game's over." The three-two pitch to Casey Blake is popped up. Laird calling for it. Pujols coming in. Laird makes the play. Good inning. One, two, three, inning for Kyle McClellan. He does answer with a zero. Five to one, Cardinal. Welcome back to Dodger Stadium, Fox Sports Midwest. Budweiser, what's on tap? The Cardinals and the Dodgers. Game four tomorrow, 2 30, is when our coverage begins. Chris Carpenter and Billingsley. That's your starters for the finale of this series. Chris Carpenter hoping to rebound from a rough. Start Gerald Laird showing the mechanics of a pop up out. Well, when that ball goes up, you know, you remember you got your the mask on. You look up, you take the mask off, you look up and locate the ball, and then you throw it away far enough away that if the wind gets it, you, you know, you start stumbling a little bit, you don't trip over it. In that case, he just didn't have time to pick up the bat, he was more in jeopardy. And McDougal grills Tyler Green. It's one of those hit by pitches that for all intents and purposes look as purposeful as can be but I'm sure he didn't do it on purpose. No. Remember the first pitch to Laird was kind of got away from him almost came in but it doesn't help your left kidney much when you get Pitching drilled right 46, there. Kyle and Joe West has warned both managers after that hit by pitch and again you're you and Jim Hayes were talking about Tony's eye. He just seems to have an eye issue that he's dealing with in his right eye, but he's out to check on Tyler Green. He says he's okay. He'll have a little bruise on his back tomorrow. I'm sure he'll probably yeah. be black and blue. You might even see some stitching, our, stitch marks. Our signature. Yep. Commissioner's signature. But you know, I have a problem with, with Joe West issuing a warning. That was clearly a pitcher that does not have very good control that just hit Tyler right. Green in the back. And, you know, by issuing the warning, then you put the, the thought that maybe it was delivered, which I think we both right on target. There goes the runner. And Tyler Green with a great jump steals second base, and he stole that on McDougal, who had a long delivery home. One of the things that Tyler Green brings you is good speed. A little extra speed right there, clearly. Look at the ball waiting. Jamie Carroll waiting for the ball. Is he going more concerned about sliding past the bag? Almost a le too late a slide for Tyler Green. Well, maybe that's a little way of old fashioned baseball is 
I'll get even with the pitcher drilling me as I'll take out the, the middle infielder. And I like to see the slide feet first. Sacrifice situation here. And McDougal, who has at times some serious control issues, you wonder if he throws that same pitch that he threw to Tyler Green that we both believe was just a bad pitch on his part, not purposeful. If he hits Kyle McClellan in the back, then Joe West has to throw him out, doesn't he? Well, that, that's another reason why it, the rule has evolved an awful lot. No, technically he doesn't have to throw him out. And, and and why I say it's even more confusing, it used to be that once warnings were issued, if a ball got away from a pitcher and it hit a batter, he was automatically ejected along with his manager. After the manager got ejected, that was the pitching coach. But now they say, well, no, we leave it up to the umpire's discretion whether it was intentional or not. Well, an umpire has the ability to throw you out immediately without a, a, a warning if he thinks you deliberately threw at someone. So why issue the warning? It's irrelevant. You get yourself in trouble by issuing a warning and then try to determine, well, it wasn't intentional. If you get the judgment anyway, it doesn't matter. Exactly. And I, and I, I mean, I saw games where a guy was issued a warning and clearly a, a flopping a, a curveball up there and it gets away from you hit somebody but everybody understood he was ejected the, the manager was gone the 2 2 McClellan does not get the butt down it's a strikeout well, this not, does not move Tyler Green to third out number one now how many times sure, just guess Al, just give me a number of the number of times where you Intentionally threw it about I'm just I just want you to fess up right now in Fox Sports Midwest and tell me how many times you intentionally threw it about it. Just guess. <laughs> Ten. Ten. How many times did you throw one up and in for on a purpose beyond that? Um, a lot, a lot, a lot, lot more. more. That's I mean, exactly right. It'd and be that's hundreds. what. Okay, and that's the issue. How do you discern between those two when you're actually trying to hit somebody and just throw one inside? Sometimes you don't even know as a pitcher and an umpire has to make that choice. Somehow. Today hitters intimidate pitchers. In my era, pitchers intimidate hitters. So if the ball got away, I took four steps to the hitter saying, that's right, I'm throwing at you. Just to get him mad and get him out of his frame of mind. I used to have the old fashioned, you know, you get warned, you know, for Throwing a the ball, they'd warn you it's $50 fine. And Bob Gibson said, I got a whole bunch of $50 bills. <laughs> yes, he does. But and he earned them too. But that was part of the art of pitching. You know, hitters expected it more than they do today. You know, today, inside strikes, you know, hitters look at pitchers like, what are you, are you trying to arm me? But hitters went up there knowing that they were going to be thrown out. Watch out. He picked him off second, but the throw gets away. Tyler Green is going to score on the error by Mike McDougal. He had him picked off. Green was off with the throw, and he comes all the way home. And it's 6-1 to one Cardinals. Let's assume that Jamie Carroll catches this ball. Watch Tyler Green. He goes to third base. He goes, I can't get back there. I'm going to go to third. But if Jamie Carroll would have caught that ball, Tyler Green might have been still safe at third base because they had to execute another throw and a tag. He gets a stolen base for that, two in an inning. For Tyler Green, a swing and a miss by Ryan Terrio. And the Cardinals have gotten so many breaks on this road trip. And it's more than just that. They've swung the bat well, they've pitched well, the relief crew has done a nice job, but there have been a lot of breaks that the Cardinals have received and they got another one there. Well by being aggressive doing the things that they're doing I think you create breaks. A good you point. put the pressure on the opposition. Speed can make you do some crazy things. How many times did Willie McGee force a team into doing something crazy. Willie. One of our favorite well, Cardinals. Oh yeah I mean one of our all time favorites and. But as Whitey used to say, it's, it's the darndest thing. You know, a, a pitcher would throw a ball in the dirt and Willie would swing at it. Then he'd throw one over his head he'd swing at. And then he would throw one right down the middle and Willie would get a 
you know, a line drive base hit someplace. McDougal, part of his success is his wildness. Effectively wild. Effectively wild that you're just not comfortable in that batter's box. Not a comfortable pitch there as a hard breaker freezes Ryan Terrio. And that's two strikeouts. Make that three for McDougal. Fireworks night. We'll be back at Bush on Friday, April 22nd. Celebrate the start of the 2011 Cardinal season by watching a dazzling display of fireworks. Yes, Al, that's a dazzling display. From the comfort of your own seat, for tickets, visit us online at cardinals.com. It's going to be a great weekend. A lot of great promotions, but you know who the opponent is? Cincinnati. So an early yeah. showdown. Maybe some fireworks first through ninth inning in that game, too. Why is there a history? Well, there's always a history, Al. <laughs> in this case, it's a recent history. Cardinal fans love to come out and cheer Brandon Phillips. And Cueto. And Cueto. Three unassisted. Retires Kobe Rasmus. One more Cardinal run. A five-run lead, middle of the sixth. Next time you want to catch a Cardinals game, head to StubHub. Where you'll find the seats you want and the freedom to choose where you want to sit. StubHub. In the official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the St. Louis Cardinals. Six to one Redbirds. Dodgers with just four hits. Kyle McClellan working his sixth inning. He'll have Ethier Kemp and Uribe, the middle of the Dodger lineup. And this is the part of the lineup where you have to be very careful, Al. Got to be careful, but you still attack them. And Ethier attacks the baseball, hits it in the gap, run down very well by Colby Rasmus. There's going to be a play at second base, and Andre Ethier takes the extra base. Colby ran it down well, throw a bit offline, and Ethier with a leadoff double. First extra base hit for the Dodgers. Uh, it's in the gap. He's going to have to throw across his body, but Ethier made that decision, and he just. Really, it's a lesson to be learned by Kobe. Even though you got over there and cut it off, you have to anticipate they may do that and get yourself into a better throwing position and just assume that they're going to do it. That's almost the spot in the field where a runner out can take off and see whether it's a good throw or not and then still get back in time. There's times where runners are smart enough to be able to do that, but Ethier was thinking double all the way. And he's in scoring position for Matt Kemp. But it wasn't like uh, George Brett leaving the batter's box thinking too. You know, he made that decision, as you said, on the way out there. And you know, he's an outfielder. He knows how tough it is to go to your left and then throw across your body and get it back in there. And you know, we, we we've seen Kobe with his arm very erratic. You'd say he has above average strength for his arm. Yes. Just some little things that I'm sure Dave Duncan will go out there and just say, hey, you know, did a nice job to get over there. Not, no, Dave McKay did a nice job to get over there and cut that ball on. And that in itself, a lot of times, will stop a guy. But because the throw was offline, you know, he turned the single into a double. McClellan misses his location there, but a good result popped it out. Behind home plate, one and two. Saw Gerald Laird set up inside, trying to make Kemp believe they're going to go inside. Established that in his mind, and then snuck outside. And then the ball was, as you said, miscommunication or misdirection, and stays over the middle of the plate. One and two to Kemp. Dangerous hitter. Curveball. Big loop in that one. And he sure stays back well, doesn't he? We noticed that earlier in at bat number one that. He somehow just manages to keep his hands back. He sees the break right out of the hand of Kyle McClellan. And, you know, watching the mechanics of McClellan, he really gets the ball close to his ear. And that's a little unusual for pitchers. Usually they bring their arm way back. But Kyle has that little hitch in his delivery. A little short arm. I would think it'd be tough to pick the ball yeah. up from time to time. Yeah, he's, he's kind of a short arm, and it, and it is more deceptive. Ethier should tag and go to third. Craig gets the ball back in. To the cutoff man, and the Dodgers now with the runner at third with one out for Juan Uribe. Again, Cardinals will trade that out for that extra base anytime. And you're at this part in the order right now, Uribe and Loney really struggling 
to take advantage of it. At some point, there's going to be some pitchers out there that are going to say, I'm in trouble right now with these two guys coming up. But they're struggling, and you still, in your mindset, you say, okay, I can strand that guy at third. I know there's no betting in baseball, but I bet she swings hard. <laughs> I win. And guess what? It doesn't do the job. Major League pop up out number two handled by Tyler Green. And now it's up to James Loney Dodger fans. You got not a, very happy with that at bat. golden opportunity to have an RBI and swing at the first pitch and swinging like he did he, he just hands you an out and, the, and doesn't drive in the run. You mentioned the first four in the order were swinging the bat well for the Dodgers five through nine were not. Four of the five hits for the Dodgers have come from the top. And I think Kyle may be coming out here and thinking, okay, I got two outs. I got a left handed bat out there. But with six to one, Al. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to think that way. But, but I think he is thinking yeah. that, but I'd rather have him just right. go right at Loney. Go right after him. You know, it's not like. Uh, that's a tying run over third base. You have the luxury of having this big lead. Barajas with three home runs on deck, showing a little bit more power early on than James Loney anyway. The ball got away from Kyle as he took the ball. He really wasn't paying attention. And trailing six to one, you can't afford to get thrown out. 1 0 pitch a little tapper to McClellan not a good at bat for Loney not a good inning for the Dodgers Kyle McClellan freezing through six it's a new season for your lawn visit your local Lowe's for savings and a free MLB fan guide compliments of Scott's beautiful Dodger Stadium six to one Cardinals and speaking of lawn this Dodger Stadium field is always in great condition it's always voted one of the best infields in all of baseball as Kenley Jansen takes over in relief for the Dodgers last year's rookie season it was quite a debut is he had an ERA of 0 0.67 that was forced best all time among rookie hurdlers with at least 25 innings pitched Batters bad just 130 against him, but Albert is not a typical batter. And last night he smoked one over the boards. Albert was his first hitter. Home Albert, run. <laughs> Albert was not very polite. He's our Mid America Chevy dealers. Call to the bullpen. Kenley Jansen. He averaged over 13 strikeouts per nine innings. Slider strike one to Albert. Albert one for three. Six game hitting streak now. For Albert, and the average continues to climb to 46, which is still not a high average for Albert, but considering where he was, he's turned it around in a hurry. Mike McDougal is out. He was in relief of Clayton Kershaw, who had a rough, rough outing. Kershaw went four and two thirds innings, six hits, five runs, all of them earned. He walked five and struck out five. Um. Offense by the Cardinals has really put a hurting on the Dodger pitching staff. And with the day game tomorrow, they have Billingsley, their second best pitcher going, but there's some tired arms in that pin, aren't there? They get out of play over the Cardinal dugout, Barajas, and it hits in the camera well. There are some tired arms for sure, and you think maybe the tired legs for the Cardinals from running around the bases so much. Those Never leg, get tired. Those leg muscles that. will recover yeah, quicker. Yeah, they will. <laughs> they will. <laughs> those are good ones, especially when you hit a home run. You get to kind of jog, and that's not so hard to do. He's going swing dog. Didn't flinch. Ball right behind him. Of course, he knew Tony had his hat at the ready. The two-two to Albert. Swung on, hit deep to right field. Back goes Ethier, right in front of the track, and he makes the play. Albert's one for four. Albert did not quite hit that ball on the screws, but he has the kind of power to be able to go deep in 
Los Angeles to the right field. And see we talked about earlier. Shut out in Seattle. Like Ten and four somewhere. Like I believe that was Felix Hernandez in that start. Really. King Felix. Not able to tame the great Kansas City Royals offense. And Minnesota's having some troubles. They're not used to Garden uh, Garden Hire's not used to seeing his team struggle. Joe Maurer went on the disabled yeah. list. Line drive to right. That should get down in front of Ethier. No, he comes on hard, makes the play. That ball held up. Matt Holiday might have hit that ball too hard. Get bought by him, that would have been interesting. But hey, do you see okay. that uh, baseball is really evolving as Kobe Lewis became the first player to go on maternity leave. Paternity leave. Yes, he did. Because his wife had a baby. He, oh, oh, they call it paternity leave. Yeah, he, he was able he's to, the first one to do it. It's, now, it's in the new contract. Is it how many days? Two, I three? don't know. I th believe it's three days. That's now he is a starting pitcher, so sure. that's a little easier, but it's part of the latest basic agreement that players are allowed to do that. Yeah. There was a time Al, where that was not <laughs> in my time. <laughs> yeah, you did. What do you mean your wife's having a baby? You want <laughs> you want to miss a game. That's your problem. <laughs> yeah. You better planning. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's there's an off season for that, but daddies didn't didn't get that opportunity to to miss ball games, and I think because of that, today's modern managers were all played in that era, or most of them, you know that now they're trying to realize that that's a very very important time for a family, and they missed the birth of, of, of their child, and so they're, they want to make sure their players have that opportunity. Swing and a miss strikes out David Freeze a good inning for Kenley Jansen. Time to stretch in L.A. 6 1 Cardinal. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush life. My Bank of America ATM deposits are as easy as an infield fly. No deposit slip no envelope with Bank of America member FDIC and by AT&T. Kyle McClellan out for his seventh inning of work. He has a six to one lead. He's given up just five hits. And one of the reasons is he's been on the black. Well, we always talk about pitching on the corners, pitching on the black, stay out of the middle of the plate. Look where these pitch. That's the perfect, perfect pitch down and away right on the black. Now a good pitch away from a left handed batter. Look at the movement on his cutter right there. You see the little downward action right in the middle of the zone, but movement and at the top of the block. How about Kyle? You know, this is third start is at the big league level and he's done six innings and in all three of them trying to set a new career high right here in his third start. Tough matchup for him too and Clayton Kershaw, but he has done much better than the Dodger left hander. Kershaw went just four and two thirds innings and McClellan as you mentioned. To begin work here in the seventh. Bottom of the order for the Dodgers, Barajas, the pitcher spot, and Jamie Carroll. Uh, it's early in the season, but the Dodgers are on a little tailspin. They're trying to avoid losing for the fifth straight game. But what we have seen, they have to be better than what we've seen, because this right now is not a very good ball club. Another exodus here at Dodger Stadium. I believe there's a Percentage of the crowd here that stays for God bless America and then decides it's time to beat the traffic here in LA. Well, it's always been a late arriving, early leaving, but I think you're right. Line drive foul. The Dodgers, we mentioned in the telecast last night, have drawn three million fans or more for 15 straight years. They have a great tradition here. Of course, with new ownership, they've had some issues and some problems. Long fly ball to center field. Rasmus back to the wall, and he makes the play right in front of the deepest part of the left center field fence. And Kyle McClellan, just a long out. Well, in San Francisco, that was a trouble part of the, the field. And that ball just kind of drifted back there. Ivan De Jesus Jr. is the pinch hitter. We saw him last night. 
quickly, he made a quick out, but his father, and he looks just like him, doesn't he, Al? His yes, father was a longtime Cub infielder, but also played with the Cardinals for a year or so. And Happened to play with him, and we called him Pulpo, which means octopus, and I don't know why. Why? I don't know why. We just called him Pulpo. Well, why? Because he asked us to. Okay. So this is Pulpo Jr. Marinated Pulpo. I guess. You ever had that? No, I have not. Oh, it's delicious. I'll take your word for it. Don DeJesus, a veteran player. He's yeah. a coach now with the Dodgers and just. He came up in their system. Great guy. Dodgers system, his dad. Two and one to DeJesus. Line drive is not handled by Terrio. A tough chance. That ball hit right on the nose. And we think that would be a base hit. We'll wait for the scoring as DeJesus reaches with one out. Well, it's his first major league hit. And they'll stop and get that ball for him. But Terrio played that into a hit. Eli Wallach gets the ball. Like Miles drops it. It was nice and clean until Miles dropped it. First major league hit. Jamie Carroll came into the game, part of a double switch. He's one of the hotter hitting Dodgers. Seventh in the league. 37 years of age. Really put together a nice career, is a very good defensive player, but he's hit very well. Had a great chat with him before the game. He's a budding artist, too, a little bit like Bob Tewksbury, former Cardinal, how he does drawings. Well, what Jamie has taken, a, taken on is when he's on road trips, one of the ways to keep himself stress free is he likes to draw and then he'll draw players and get them to sign the drawing that he did. He doesn't do caricatures, he does kind of real life drawings and he's ground ball foul but David freeze does the way right it thing. anyway Play it. you can't you know turn around and say something but so you go and execute the play and it's good practice <laughs> Tim wallet former third okay. baseman pats him on the back I saw that's, that. that's the way you're supposed to do it kid. Hey, nice going kid Tim wallet former expo most of his career very good defensive player. He was a good all-around player. Yes, he was. Maybe Jamie Carroll will do a picture of you, Al. Draw, do a drawing of you and have you sign it. He says he's got them up all over his house. Really? Done about 20 of them. And he's working on a guy that oh, you may have heard of, Albert Pujols. Oh. He said, I'm almost done. I just have one eye to do How about that one. <laughs> That's what he told me. Maybe the menacing one. Well, maybe you can help out of some charities with auctioning off those. Could be. Original artwork with the signature of the subject. Could be. I don't know if he's any good because I haven't seen him to answer your earlier question. Two and one to Jamie Carroll. Fly ball to center field. Kobe Rasmus backs up a few and makes the play. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. I see career high in innings pitched, and you hope that Kyle McClellan can finish off the seventh inning. What a job he's done. There is activity in the bullpen. So you get the, the feeling that this would probably be his last inning. They would not allow him to get to Ethier again. But he's only thrown 89 pitches. So Mott and Batista. But apparently they're not even going to let him get to Ethier. Interesting there'd be two right handers. Warming up, trying to figure out why that might be. Well, well now there's not. 
Well, that's, Presto change well, that's why we got Trevor. A little, a little surprising that Trevor wasn't up. Batista sits down. I've been up in the Dodger bullpen before with two other guys. Three of us. Tommy Lasorda loved to have as many pitchers throwing as possible. Many, many times. We would all ask, who, who are we up for? And, we, and, the, and Bar Mark Cressy was the bullpen coach, and he said, he goes, I don't know. I don't know. Tommy just wants guys throwing. Yeah. I would, uh, of course, Leo the Lip, Grocer managing the Cubs one time, had two pitchers warming up, went to the mound, and called in somebody that wasn't warming up. <laughs> That's even worse. I was warming up in one game. I believe it was against the Phillies here for the Dodgers. And I asked the bullpen coach, who am I warming up for? He said, I don't know. And I told him, you realize they don't have a left-handed hitter on this team? The, the only guy they've got is in AAA right now. He said, I don't know. Tommy just wants you to throw him. <laughs> so I did. And I understand. You know, and Tommy Lasorda was a pitcher. But I understood that uh, there were not very many relievers that thought he did a good job of managing the bullpen. He had a very different philosophy. Pitch until your arm falls off until you have a bad game and then you go to the bottom of the you heat. go to the bottom. They, oh I know about those guys. Three two is the count. Tony Gwynn is the hitter. There's a line drive to right field. Back goes Craig and it's a long out. As Kyle McClellan has now worked seven innings and enjoys a six to one lead. Our Verizon game recap the Cardinals lead the Dodgers six to one top of the eighth inning. Kyle McClellan the starter for the Cardinals has been very strong just one run the Cardinals knocked out Clayton Kershaw. Alan Craig did it this three run home run in the fifth inning. Gave the Cardinals a big lead at the time and they still enjoy that six one lead and the fourth pitcher of the night for the Dodgers is Ramon Troncoso. And he was just recalled today. As they put their lefty on the disabled list. Been in the big leagues before. And he last pitched Thursday against Iowa. That's the Cubs uh, triple A striking out four and allowing one hit over two and a third scoreless innings. One and oh, 2.57 ERA in three appearances at triple A Albuquerque. Our Nissan drive of the game was delivered by Alan Craig. Got an off-speed pitch up in the zone. Albert celebrated. That knocked out first out of the starter. Took a 2-1 game to a 5-1. Opened this one up. They've added another run. So you always want to get uh, more than a four-run lead so a grand slam can't uh, tie you. Got a new left fielder. Yes. Xavier Paul is out in left field. Uribe is now at shortstop. He's been all over the diamond. Oh, that swings. Alan Craig fooled. And De Jesus has it's stayed in second. the game at he's, second. He's at second. Dodgers trying to find the right combination. This club has lost four straight games. They've not looked good offensively today. There have been some at bats in this game that you just wouldn't expect from a Dodger team. They have a manager who's one of the best hitters that I've ever seen, frankly. I mean, when he was with the Yankees, MVP in 1985, beautiful swing, great player, great fielder, nine time gold glove winner, and they were out early. Extra BP was throwing to the guys. I mean, they, they've got a lot of hitting coaches here, and they're just not getting it done. Some really bad at bats. Well, that's it. I mean, you know, Uribe is probably the most troublesome Larry, yeah. to right now. Is you know, he has one mode, and that's just swing as hard as I can. And and, and Loney's tended at the first pitch. He's the then, opposite. And then Loney's trying. You know, he's thinking too much, trying to work out of his prolonged slump. You probably had a manager somewhere along the line Al that's told you to stop thinking you're hurting oh. the team. You know I, I. They used to tell us that all the time the, you know the and they were serious about that to a degree. Momo Zali was the Cardinal hitting coach one year and some of the best advice I ever heard. Watch out How about duck. 
about that advice. Another three hit night for a newcomer, Alan Craig. But Mo Mozali was talking to Bake McCrot. And Bake was, for people who don't remember Bake, and he was an exciting and, you know, he was, he was really the first version of Willie McGee. Uh, very talented, had, you know, been swinging a lot of different pitches and everything, but hit ropes. And he was a 300 hitter, but he was off to a slow start. And Mo Mozali was, he, he might have been in the 70s at this point, and just a just a real fun-loving gentleman. And and but Bake said, "What am I doing wrong?" And Mo just started laughing and said, "Bake, you're a 300 hitter. One of these days, you're going to wake up and start hitting 300. Don't worry about it." Good advice. Yeah, I mean, you, you're, it's muscle memory. Bake McBride. I'm trying to call who told me somebody that played with Bake McBride and also might have overlapped Willie McGee said that Bake McBride was faster than not only Willie McGee but also faster than Coleman and there goes the runner Craig kind of a late jump and he's safe anyway. Not a very good throw. Alan Craig has stolen his third base of the season and that's three bases today for the Cardinals. How about that Tyler Green and Alan Craig both have three bases. Not a good throw at all, like you said. Kind of a late jump, too. Something you don't think about with Alan Craig is speed, but no. Showing that he's not afraid to run now. Well, Laird with the runner at second. Joe Ferguson, I've said this many times, who was traded from the Dodgers to the Cardinals. He was a catcher outfielder. He would steal, you know, in double figures. And he always felt that you could. A player with not good speed could always steal into double figures by just picking your spots when pitchers aren't paying attention. Darrell Porter was pretty good at that with the secondary lead. He'd get a Darryl had pretty good. He pretty could pretty run good speed, for, but he could also steal with the extended ex secondary lead and basically steal off the catcher who wouldn't pay any attention to. Sure. Well, Laird Bunn again, one and one. Is the count? Tyler Green hits next. That move intended to see if Laird would go down on the bat hang handle and show bunt. And he squares and he bunts right in front of the plate. This will get the job done. Barajas jumps on it and throws out his counterpart, Gerald Laird. And Alan Craig advances to third. So the Cardinals, even though it's just a six to one lead, they want that extra run. Second baseman, Tyler Green. Always use that extra run, Al. Even no late, about late in the game, you're up by five, but you just never quite feel safe. You still play the game properly. You try to steal a run right here. Larry does his job. They got the infield in. You know, Tony, different times, is really. Employed the squeeze play a lot. This would be a you know an opportunity for a guy like uh, Tyler Green if he wanted to do so. That's even better. How about a base at the left? Uh, you pull the infield in, guarding against this, you know playing for the squeeze or something. It opens up a lot more hitting lanes. Makes a 250 hitter a 300 hitter. Right. You know the third baseman playing back, he gobbles this ball up, but playing in. You know, you don't have the time, you know, the quickness is coming. So everybody in, and then, you know, they don't have time to react. Hard hit ball to his left. You don't have the time for a step and a dive. You just have to dive, and it got underneath him. Third baseman's back. That's a 5-3. Right. No doubt about it. And, and if the runner goes on contact, he gets thrown out of the plate. John Jay will pitch it. For Kyle McClellan, his night is through. Great job by Kyle. And Ricky, I don't know about you, but I, I can't say I'm overly surprised by what Kyle McClellan is doing. I would I'm agree. Pleasantly surprised that he's going deeper into a ball games, but his stuff is that good, and it's where he wants to be in the rotation that I come to expect it. Even as a reliever, we talk often over the last couple of years about the fact that McClellan was a four pitch pitcher. Right, and and. And in the bullpen, it's very hard to execute all four of your pitches. 
So now he has the opportunity and he knows he'll have to employ his change up more than he he did out as a reliever. But the change up's been good. Sure. So Adam Wainwright did has done decently after coming out of the bullpen. And and you know it's really the old school way of, of grooming a starter is you know you pitch a couple years out of the bullpen you'll find out a manager can use you in spots to keep you successful and let you gain that experience as to you know what it takes to get people out at this level. Could be a double play one six three dug out by Loney. John Jay hits into a double play to end the top of the eighth but the Cardinals score again. They've scored in five of the last six innings. Seven strong innings from Kyle McClellan and Miguel Batista takes over for him. Seven innings just one run no walks and two strikeouts for McClellan and Batista Al what have we seen from him in 2011. He's 40 years of age he signed his insurance as a six starter but they know that this guy is so versatile that he can be a, a long man in the bullpen. He could be a short man the days you don't use Ryan he could you know be a closing out he can be a late inning guy very very versatile you can tell he's in great shape for being 40 years of age he's done the job no ERA yet he's allowed four hits in six innings and you know, his opponents are hitting under 200 100 percent efficiency on the first batter that's a real key for relievers especially when you're coming in with men on base you can retire that first batter you know that you could stop some big innings and the inherited runner stat which has also become a big stat for relievers 19 inherited runners only three have scored this year our player of the game Kyle McClellan and today you know you try not to you know, have your relievers enter a game in the middle of, a, of an inning they all want to start an inning which obviously <laughs> makes a lot more sense. But 19 runners only three of them scoring that is very very good again McClellan was outstanding our Bud Riser player of the game seven strong innings he's trying to win his second game and Miguel Batista will try to help him. He's facing Blake Ethier and Kemp in the Dodger eight. There's that low strike that he's been throwing all year long that Joe West is not giving all night long. And that's what uh, you know a pitcher's told to do is to keep the ball at the bottom of the strike zone and. According to Fox tracks that was a strike but not granted. By Joe West. And then now he just may have eaten it up. <laughs> Here's the pitch that. Joe West called the ball is it a strike or not he's trying to throw one at the knees and. There it is right where you want it if if he hits it he's going to just pound it in the in the ground and more likely in a fielder's glove. Full count. That first batter efficiency. Is under some duress right now. Well, he's, he. That's a first batter walk. And I think the only blemish has been he's struck out four and walked four. Andre Ethier's had a good night. Most nights he does. Two for three. Single scored in the fourth inning, double in the sixth. Also hit the ball hard to center field. We want to wish a happy 10th birthday to Luke Hubert, who's here at the ballpark. His dad takes him to a Cardinal game on his birthday every year, no matter where the Cardinals are. Good dad. Here rooting on his favorite team. Congratulations, Luke. There I got the hit. Backswing. Might have gotten foul ball. tip. Yeah. Joe West trying to see if he's okay. Of course, Joe thinks it's funny. Glad it hit him and not hit you and not me. I don't blame him. With your 90 sitting on 99 career home runs. Let's make sure he hits that when the Cardinals are out of town. The pitch is 
Flared into left field, shallow left. This is trouble. Holiday on the move. He knocks it down in front of him. And it's going to end up being a double as Ethier bloops one the other way. His second extra base hit of the ball game. And a bad break for the Cardinals. As he did not hit that ball well, but he placed it perfectly. Good yeah. attempt by Matt Holiday. Yeah, as a, as a pitcher, you really appreciate the effort by Holiday. But as it turns out, you wish he would have played it conservatively and just had runners at first and second. But tried to go for the catch, the miracle catch. That ball coming off the bat of a left hander, slicing away from him, making it nearly impossible to get there. Because when you start that slide, it's still going to be sliding away. And, you know, you appreciate you try and give that effort. And he's become a, a much improved defensive left fielder since he's he's arrived. But now you kind of wish you would have played it conservatively and just had runners at first and second. Cardinals with some trouble here in the eighth inning. Batista will try to pitch out of it. Strike one to Matt Kemp. The other thing about that ball down the left field line Al is it was hit in such a way that a little scary even if he tried to play it into a single though because it might have had some by spin on it and, and, and bounce sideways. Yeah, it just he had did, that funny English on it. Did a very good job to at least keep that ball from getting by him and down in the corner and two runs possibly score. Infield back for the Cardinals. They're certainly conceding the run here with a seven to one lead. Kemp has the longest you know continued game streak right now at two uh, two nineteen. And Lou Gehrig safe for a while. Or so is Cal Ripken. And the national record safe for a while. Because that was Steve Garvey. He broke that. I broke that. The National League record on this date playing for. The Padres. Ground ball to third tough play ends up being deep short long throw by Terrio. He is safe at first. Infield hit for Matt Kemp and an RBI. And the Dodgers score their second run of the night. They trail seven to two. This well placed. David Freeze does what he can. Terrio backs it up but just doesn't have the arm strength. And that very few would on that play as Kemp was running hard and picks up his second hit. Again all the offense coming from the top of the lineup for the Dodgers. Uribe Loney and Barajas to follow. They have one hit between the three of them. And Batista will try to settle down this rally. Look at that first pitch swinging again. That is a bad at bat again for Uribe. And to a fly rule called and just. Well, I think it's at least three if not four times he swung at the first pitch. I wonder if the Dodger fans are upset with the performance or upset with the fact that he also was an ex-giant. That's performance. <laughs> Either way. They may wish he was a, a current giant. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just another at bat for Juan Uribe. But you know, he had 28 home runs last year. Don Manley told me that you know they they were willing to get rid of Terrio to go out there gamble that they could get 20 plus home runs from Uribe. And right now he's. He's been a great asset to the Cardinals. James Loney is 0 for 3. Dodgers have already scored a run here in the eighth inning. Haven't really hit a ball hard yet. Loop double down the left field line for Ethier after a leadoff walk to Casey Blake. Put runners at second and third. Infield hit for Matt Kemp. And Juan Uribe, free swinging. Popped up to Albert for the first out of the inning. You know, you just have to kind of fight your way through this slump. But right now, Uribe and Loney are killing the anytime the Dodgers get something going. It gets around to this part of the order, and it'll it'll you know they're proven hitters, and it'll switch. But right now they're rally killers. Well, next weekend the Cubs are in town. That'd be a good time for them to get hot. Very good time. They play Atlanta to end up their homestand here, and then they actually go to Chicago and Florida. 
Cardinals will begin a homestand. Washington and Cincinnati. After an off day on Monday, Washington in for three, then Cincinnati for three. Another off day and off to Houston. And then Atlanta. Atlanta, much better team than we've seen the past couple of years. And they're better than what they're playing. They are. Three and two. I believe you can start the runners here. Trailing seven to two. That's one way a manager could kind of get force fired. the issue. <laughs> and, yeah, get fired or you know, it's up to the execution of the players, but well, you're not gonna fire Don Mattingly yet, not no. insinuating that, but is players clearly not executing. Yeah, Donnie kind of player he was, you know, he, I don't think he let umpires calls bother him or anything and it seems like he's you know had great confidence in his ability. The three two to Loney with hard but foul. Things are going for the Dodgers right now. Gets into an inning ending double play. Had that same thought. And that's the way things are going for James Loney. Batting average down to 161, one homer, six RBI. Ethier and Kemp are the runner. And the pitch. Fly ball to left field, handled by Holiday. Two outs in the eighth inning, and the Cardinals just four outs away from winning their fourth straight game. And guaranteeing a 500 road trip. And also be six out of seven wins. Dave Duncan out to talk to his reliever Batista. Well, the pitcher spot. Now, De Jesus has stayed in the game, so. He may have some information about Barajas. He wants to make sure there's a conversation here. This Barajas does have some home run potential. Yeah, he's, he leads their ball club with just three home runs. Uh, just hitting 205, but he is a dangerous hitter. And the likelihood of him getting an extra base hit or driving the ball out of the ballpark is much greater than De Jesus Jr. Rajas came up with the Arizona Diamondbacks in 1999 played there for about five years then the Texas Rangers had a year where he had 21 home runs there and then the Phillies the Blue Jays well, he was with the, the Mets with the Dodgers, the Dodgers 25 games last year and hit five home runs and just under 300 in in 25 games. Still can't beat you, so go after him is the way I look at it. I agree. First pitch to Barajas, misses low. And we mentioned the catcher's earn run average for Gerald Laird coming into this game was very good, just under 2.2 ERA in games where he's catching. And he's done nothing to hurt that no. here tonight. 1 0 pitch. Low, and Batista wanted that one. Still trying to keep the ball down, so if you hit it, it's on the ground. Elevate the ball and get a chance for it to be driven out. Ground ball to third. Freeze takes it himself, he steps on the bag, and Batista gets out of it with just one run. And we're on to the ninth inning. Ryan Terrio will lead it off. The Cardinals with a five run lead. Cards by five as we go to the ninth in Los Angeles. Coming up after the game on the post game edition of Missouri Lottery. Cardinals live Pat Paris, Mike Matheny are back in St. Louis. The Cards chase Kershaw early. They'll break it down. McClellan sharp again. We'll have Tony LaRusso's post game thoughts as well. A look at Ryan Terrio as we head back to the booth. And Rick and Al, guys.
Thanks Cat Ryan Terrio a couple of hits tonight Cardinals have not had the 16 hit night but they have managed seven runs on eight hits in this game Terrio with a run scored and an RBI has been part of that offense Alan Craig the big blow three run shot in the fifth inning and still enough offense if you score seven runs in a game seven you ought to win no doubt about it you know and we really didn't anticipate off of Kershaw having a lot of offense and probably got more than what we felt we were going to get. Absolutely. So good play and as you say seven runs. That should be good enough for a victory. Cardinals have had six games where they've had ten plus hits in a row. A couple of hits in the ninth and they'll extend that streak. Probably won't get back up to 16 hits again. Which they had done in four straight ball games. But if you get as many runs off of Clayton Kershaw as the Cardinals did, five runs on six hits, you've got to be happy with that. I well, we thought on this road trip we'd see a lot of good pitching, and maybe hasn't translated that, but I'd give the hitters some credit. More, another one. More credit for Ryan Terrio. Another three hit night for him. How many Cardinals have had three hit games on this road trip? I think we're up to 11. Yeah, Alan Craig has had one tonight. We had six going into the game last night. Three more three hit games last night. And two more tonight. Terrio has done a great job. Terrio and Rasmus setting up the middle of this lineup. And early in the season, he was getting underneath a lot of balls, right. popping the ball up. Now you're seeing, even on those high pitches, which were producing little fly ball outs, he's starting to get on top of the ball, drive the ball, you know, hit it on the ground. That's going to be his asset. Eight game hit streak on the line for Colby Rasmus. A guy like Terrio, if he hits the ball in the air, it's going to come down to someone's glove. Now Kobe's got the power to where you can't just serve the ball up there and say hit it because he will hit it out. Kobe last night had three doubles. Looking for his first hit up among the league leaders in many offensive categories including extra base hits. Will be first in the league in hits. Batting average at 397 coming into this game, and he's 0 for 3 with a walk. And at a base hit, the hit streak continues. And that is hit number 10 for the Cardinals. Seven straight games. Seven straight games where they've done that. Maybe yeah. 16 and isn't the, far off. And the potential the with Albert coming up. You know, to get to double figures in and runs just game of inches and when he dies for that ball it gets on through this is where guys batten up their batting averages when you can get right. into the you know right. get into these relievers that you know probably you know, say a four a player Right. Just recalled today from the minor leagues, but for a meaning halfway between AAA and the big leagues in terms of talent and ability, and you know you're not quite sure which he is, whether he's ready or not. So we call him 4A players. Yeah. Have very good numbers at AAA, right. but just they come up here and they're just a little short. Base hit, Pujols, hit number 11 for the Cardinals, and that's going to score a run. Maybe. And he's out at the plate. Perfect throw from the left fielder. Right on the money. Xavier Paul is that left fielder, and Albert gets the base hit, but they execute and throw him out. Look like Terrio could have gotten a little more help at the plate as he's not anticipating the play. That's a strong throw. Strong throw. Comes all the way through, and then the catcher throws that left leg out there, blocking Terrio's approach to the plate. But I don't know if he even realized there was going to be a play. Stumbled a little around third. He's running hard, but 
You saw him slow up just a little bit there. And now the ball, he doesn't have control of it. But he doesn't stand on step on the plate. He never tagged either. Never tagged. But he's out now. <laughs> I think now that he's sitting down, he <laughs> yeah. is officially out. I think you're right. I think when the leg was stuck out, that impeded his first thought, which was to just jump on the plate with his left leg, and all of a sudden he found Barajas' left leg stuck out. Nobody did that better than Mike Sosha here. Oh, with the Mike Sosha, this uh, classic. And he paid the price a few times. Yes, One he time did. Jack Clark just <laughs> knocked him into uh, Houston. <laughs> right there, after that collision, they said, where are you? He said, Houston. I would say okay. you're okay. I totally remember that moment in time. Oh, he got smoked, but as you said, no one was tougher and better at blocking the play. But another multi-hit game for Albert Pujols. Two for five. Matt Holliday has walked twice. He needs a hit. And lined out twice. Pujols up to 254, by the way. And you don't see people like, you know, like Jack Clark running over Socia, or how about uh, uh, Ray Langford, and Dalton, Darren Dalton with you the know, Phillies catchers. I mean, you're hung out to dry right there as you're trying to time that ball right there. You stick your leg out there, so you know it's clear sailing. Just run them over. That's amazing. If you, if you're the aggressor, even though they got equipment, there's another base hit up the middle. And the Cardinals are going to try to score again. This time the throw comes from Matt Kemp. That one's too late. RBI base hit for Matt Holiday. Four straight hits in the ninth inning. We may get to 14 again. And we <laughs> might get to 14, 15, 16 hits. That was hit number 12, and that was blistered up the middle. That is six hits off of this pitcher in an inning and third. David Freeze doesn't have a hit to this point. Might as well join the club. Eight to two Cardinals. Twelve hit night. And counting. Boy, there was a time that we used to complain about the Cardinals not adding on. You know, we'd, we'd get a lead and just sit on it. Can't say that on this West Coast trip, can you? <laughs> not at all. And just punishing what they're doing to the opposition. And you wonder if that kind of attitude might transcend the rest of the year for the Cardinals as, as they've started to develop this sense of what they can do as a team early, if that may help them later on. It's almost like the team that has the walk off home runs early on starts to think, hey, we're a come from behind team. Every team looks for that identity out every season, yet you really start from scratch with that. And the Cardinals had, you know, Antonio Russo go back to his interesting press conference the last day of the homestand. That'd be a good word for it. And just, you know, saying, I got faith in these guys. And it was a matter of time. But what it, what it really boils down to in my mind is when Pujols, Holiday, and Berkman hit, then the younger hitters just all relax. They don't have to do much. The pressure's off of them, and they just go out there and contribute. When they, the the big guys didn't do it, especially after we got rid of Ludwig last year, the younger and then Freeze was was gone by that time. The younger hitters tried to do something they weren't capable of doing. They tried to do too much. You think there's not just the younger hitters out, but also the glue type players, and think of Yadier Molina perhaps, and Ryan Terrio for sure as guys that are kind of solid players. Skip Schumacher that you know their abilities become more magnified when when the big guys are doing their job you appreciate those guys getting on base there's a and hit. there's another hit <laughs> David Freeze finds a hole and the Cardinals will pick up another run Pujols scores holiday to third David Freeze with his first hit of the night second RBI <laughs> you talk about some C and I hits now as that pitch was up and away, got on top of it, tomahawked it, and just 
Looney off the, off the, the first base bag and hit right inside the bag. Well, we've seen this the entire week, Al, that it almost seems as if there are no fielders out there. Cardinals are finding holes. There's so many gaps. And the Cardinals are getting a lot of breaks. This ball almost started out as a foul ball. It ends up as another RBI hit. Well, watch it. it. It's where it goes by the bag, but initially it is in foul territory. And then it had some English. It came back to the left, stayed inside the bag for an RBI base hit. And it'll take cut. It. Told his young pitcher, like, kid, I'm sorry, but you're it. Go get him. That is. Mm. Five straight hits this inning, and luckily they have an out. Descalzo, I guess he's bored. He's going to be hitting for Batista. And he pops it up. Barajas is back to make the play. Out number two. Descalzo. Well, whatever, huh? Whatever Honeycutt said, it was a <laughs> He had the right words, Al, just the right words. Descalzo had been two for five as a pinch hitter. That brings in Gerald Laird as a sacrifice bunt. And one for three and done a nice job behind the plate. Uh, he's a welcome addition. He's got a delightful personality. The pitchers are really trusting him already. You know, Jim Leland and, and his coaching staff all told me that he was a much better hitter than what he displayed last season. But he fits in nicely to this ball club. 13 hits for the Cardinals. Pressure's on, Gerald. It's up to you to get the 14. That would tie the Cardinals with six consecutive 14 hit games. Good swing at a high fastball, 91 miles an hour. Those outfielders a little mm. feel like they've been out on defense for a long time. I would say so. Infielders as well. I can tell you the pitcher feels like he's been out there for a very long time. The 1-1 one -one pitch to Laird. Mm. You get frustrated, but you can't even drill a guy. Because you know, you'd be That's hurting right. your ball club. Uh, then they'd have thrown out. Be one way to bring in another pitcher. You know, I mean, the, the biggest thing you do right now is you take one for the team. That's right. And Miles can't come to pitch. And it's popped up to center field. And mercifully for Troncoso, Kent makes the play onto the bottom of the ninth. Cardinals lead. We are glad you've joined us on Fox Sports Midwest. Glad you're still with us and you are treated to getting to watch Eduardo Sanchez pitch again. That number is not a misprint. Five strikeouts in his first outing. He was electric, Al Roboski. I watched it from St. Louis and it was very impressive. First five strikeout uh, performance by a St. Louis rookie in his major league debut since Manny, Manny Ibar. Got six strikeouts back in 98. 22 years of age, a bright future. And what I liked about it is not only was he throwing 95, but he had command of that secondary pitch. The slider or breaking ball was, was very effective. Everybody was, was ranting and raving about yeah. that breaking ball, but the fastball wasn't too shabby in no, his it, 90s. But, you know, that's for a young player to have that secondary pitch is, is a big difference maker. So Dave, only 22 years of age. Yeah, and, and Dave Duncan said, Al, that he really is typically more at 91, 92 miles an hour than 95. He thought he was amped up a little bit. And you know what? If that's what it takes to get him amped up, you like to keep him there because that was outstanding. And if you're a Cardinal fan, there's a lot of optimism that he could become a a lot more than that somewhere down the road since he's such a young pitcher. But Everybody needs to be patient. Yeah, I agree. Be patient. But isn't it promising to see somebody throw in on 95? You can get away with mistakes. 
If you're throwing 85 and you throw the same pitch, it gets hammered. 95, you can throw you can throw it by, uh, you know, location. And then to have that breaking ball too, they can't just sit on one pitch. But another perfect spot for it. Nine-two game. Give them a chance to close out a game. Ricky, I think it's so important for young pitchers to have that ability to finish a game right. that you win and get those handshakes and say, this is pretty cool. You know, my manager's shaking my hand, all my teammates are out there, and say, I want to be out there again when the pressure's on. There's that break. <laughs> that is pretty nasty. And he threw it for a strike. 0 and 2 to Ivan De Jesus. He had his first major league hit. He came on in the seventh inning. He is from Venezuela, but you know that because of the political unrest in Venezuela, you know a lot of those players now they kind of shut down the Venezuelan academy and they go over to the Dominican. But Cardinals have invested a lot of money in their Latin American facilities. And nice to see it starting to pay off. Sanchez one and two swing and a miss and another strikeout for Eduardo Sanchez. Now, I know Dave Duncan feels he's more consistently at 91 but you talk to the minor league people they, they will tell you 95 is, is consistent and that's 95 again right there up and away in the black. Not too many people are going to turn on that thing. And now you keep telling me to be patient. I heard you say that. But can I still be excited? Oh, most definitely. And rightfully so. Excited and hopeful, but patient at the same time. Is that okay? Yes. All right. We don't want to crown him closer tomorrow. No, I mean, you're, you're really doing a young guy a disfavor. And, and the same thing is you look at Boggs and Mott. You know they they're gaining valuable time learning the trade and you know they're more advanced than Sanchez. But How about the guy that comes to mind you think about the greatest closer perhaps ever to play this game Mariano Rivera was a seventh and eighth inning guy for a long time behind John Wetland yeah, he, before he, he was learned. given he that ninth inning role the trade and and it's just normal progression. You think there's been anybody better than Mariano Rivera? I don't think you can say there is. I mean, he's done it for so long and on the biggest stage with right. you know, five world championships. When you think of the best organizations in baseball, you think of the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Dodgers, and the Cardinals. And the Cardinals have had, with the exception of the Yankees, have won more pennants and world championships than any other team. Now it's 27 to 10 in world <laughs> championships. Okay. But you know, look at the other franchises that are so far below the Cardinals. Another two strike opportunity for Sanchez. Another thing that kind of excites you is he looks like he has command. Exactly. You know, he throws his pitches for strikes. The 2 2 from Sanchez. And a swing and a miss. Back to back strikeouts for Eduardo Sanchez here in the ninth inning. Now you want him to ride this the streak as long as he possibly can. But really before you can ever really figure out and look at he just gets him a swing and a pitch down out of the strike zone. But you really don't know anything about Sanchez until he has a bad out. That's How exactly does he deal right. with that? Oh, that's a you good know, point. I mean people really you know, don't understand that, but that's part of the development too. Can he bounce back from a bad act? Everybody can act macho when everything's going good. We haven't seen that yet. Marcus Thames. And what you the hope? Last is, hope for the Dodgers. You don't see it for about 10 or 15 appearances. And I thought you were going to say years. <laughs> well, well, that's it. We that's know not going to happen. A, yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> this guy's got great power, but very easily could be another strikeout victim. Marcus Thames. Two outs, the ninth inning. Popped up on the right side. In comes the right fielder, John Jay, and that's a base hit for Thames. Two out hit brings in Casey Blake, who is 0 for 3. He walked and scored in the eighth inning. 
second Dodger run. The Cardinals scored in four straight innings in the middle of this game. A run in the third, run in the fourth, three in the fifth, one more in the sixth, and then they tacked on in both the eighth and the ninth. And that's another thing about the Cardinals this road trip. They're scoring in multiple innings. Boy, it, it, that is so important. You know, you need to score at least three, but if you can score in four innings, you usually guarantee a win. One out from a win here. They're 1,000 and first against the Dodgers all time. I think they had, the Dodgers became the fifth franchise that they've, you know, accumulated over a thousand wins against. Here goes the runner. Eduardo Perez pays no attention to him as Pujol stays behind him. That should be defensive indifference. It, was. it is, and a two-strike count on Casey Blake. And the Cardinals one strike away from winning their fourth straight. Perez is set, and the pitch. This is low. Cardinals are seven and seven, hoping to go eight and seven, and get within a game and a half. Nobody's worried about that yet. But a game and a half of the Cincinnati Reds. The one two pitch fouled back. Pretty gonna, good swing there. I'm going to give you a little strange comment, but the way some scouts are today, how did this kid get signed? It's not very big. <laughs> Somebody might have had a gun. You know, now, left handers, they yeah. take exception, but well, you know, you're everybody right. wants 6'4. That's exactly and above, right. Uh, you know, pitchers. But somebody saw that he has an electric arm. Something about that 94 miles an hour might have done the difference. The one two pitch from Sanchez to Blake swing and a miss and he strikes out the side in the ninth inning Eduardo Sanchez nails down the Cardinal victory. Fourth in a row. And the Cardinals continue to hit. And now they have played the Dodgers very well in this series. Well, the Dodgers are struggling right now but give a lot of credit to this Cardinal offense and good pitching here again tonight. 13 hits for the Redbirds as they take this one from the Dodgers. Post game is next.